Blog Talk Radio. Okay, I'm reloaded. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Say, 2015 and the homie Cell Block. What up? <laughs> hey, yo, Cell Showtime, man. What up, Cell? Time to go back in, right? Face off with you. Season 5, reload. Let's Come on. get it. Helping our people come up out of the system Understanding unless you stand as a winner, not as a victim You got those who rejected the truth, Father, forgive them But if you want it, you know the place for knowledge and wisdom is Where is that, baby? The big talk for you, season five, reload it, call in and give us your view Uh, yeah, it's the big talk for you It's the big talk for you Uh, back at it like we never left God is here, I see the devil left Another level, yes it's like a rotated metal F Cause my bars declare war with a treble clef Helping our people come up out of their slumber Awaking them from the dead They're like zombies walking among us And also removing that one encumbers Making them dumber And prayerfully this will let the light shine through like in summer I'm making spread the gospel And also acts of apostles And seemingly makes me mean a demeanor Coming no hostile, I growl at them You better just go with credit Verbal beheaded, speaking semantic, apologetic Let us reason, should we believe in the mighty eye Was guarding to be the literal or Join the form, come with your doctrine and let's expose them. The base talk for you, season five, we reloaded. Helping our people come up out of the system, understanding, let you stand as a winner, not as a victim. You got those who rejected the truth, Father, forgive them. But if you want it, you know the place for knowledge and wisdom is. The base talk for you, season five, reloaded, call in and give us your view. Uh, yeah, it's the base talk for you. Reloaded. It's the base talk for you. Backing down is not an option, we're here to conquer this false doctrine You confident in hopping the lions and we all watching The enemy's plotting, peep the wicked schemes you concocting The Lord is warning us, better open up with his knocking We gotta fight this war with the art of intelligence Heaven sent messages to us, they asking where's the evidence Trying to use science to claim he don't exist as prevalent Challenge what they can't prove and they act like it's irrelevant We don't take heed to cut and leave the vibes fable You wanna discuss it, come and sit at the round table Biblical scholarship, history, politics and archaeology, we teach like professors at colleges. The word is of no private interpretation. Every man will try to make his point with great determination. Our job is to plant and water, then wait for termination. My only purpose is to worship God and serve the nation. Helping our people come up out of the system. Understanding, let you stand as a winner, not as a victim. You got those who rejected the truth, Father, forgive them. But if you want it, you know the place for knowledge and wisdom is. The big talk for you, season five, read, know they call in and give us your view, uh, yeah, it's the big talk for you, it's the big talk for you. Helping our people come up out of the system, understanding, let you stand as a winner, not as a victim. You got those who rejected the truth, Father, forgive them, but if you want it, you know the place for knowledge and wisdom is. The big talk for you, season five, read, know they call in and give us your view, uh, yeah, it's the big talk for you. Yeah, Shalom. I want to give a shout out to Sal at the Big Talk for You. What's going on? Hey, the Big Talk for You is where it's at. You know, get your verses straight. Put yourself on record. Come on board. Present what you got. If anyone try to cut you off, Sal will just mute that guy's mic. You know, he'll let you express what you got. He'll let you present what you studied for. Let the audience decide if what you got, you know, is inside the scriptures. Debate talk for you once again. Shout out to Sal. Terrific job. Hey, you can press the number one or find yourself on a lion's den. Peace and blessings, family. This is your good, humble brother, Bassim. 
representing the DMV area. And when I'm not holding down my mid-level position in corporate America, I'm tuned into the most respected debate show on the globe. That's Debate Talk for You with the esteemed host, Sal Showtime. I come to you today in peace. My name is Imuna Yisrael, recent author of The Angry Quote-Unquote Black Woman Syndrome Revisited, Volume 1, Her Mind. It is a hot new piece all about the mind of the quote-unquote angry black woman. How does she operate in this society? How has slavery affected her? Just opening up really a 200-plus-year-old stereotype. So if you haven't taken a look as yet, Go ahead over to www.imunayisrael.com and you can definitely check that out. Or you can just go to Amazon and look up Angry Black Woman Syndrome Revisited and see us there. You can check me on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, you know, Periscope, YouTube, everything under Imuna Yisrael. So until next time, thank you for tuning in and definitely be the change that you desire to see in the world. One. Hi, this is Tyrone Thompson, host of the Blog Talk Radio broadcast, Talk Real Solutions. Please tune in and listen to all of our shows seven nights a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At Talk Real Solutions, we cover a variety of topics to ensure we speak about what may be needed in our community at any time. Talk Real Solutions is the hottest Blog Talk Radio show going on right now. You can listen to our broadcast at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash talk real solutions or visit our website at www.talkrealsolutions.com. Also, like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash talk real solutions. You can call in at any time during the show and add to the conversation and offer your solutions at 1-858-357-8453. That's 1-858-357-8453. Because at Talk Real Solutions, we want to make sure you have a chance to talk real solutions. Now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Achad. Shalom, this is Brother Jason of the Hand of Yah Ministries, where the name of Yahuwah is proclaimed. And I want to thank Sal Showtime for allowing the Heavenly Father to use him and his show, Debate Talk for You, as a meeting place for people around the world to hear scriptural truth. If this show has been a blessing in your life as it has been in mine, send a donation to the ministry and support the work. Keep up the good work, Sal, and may Yahuwah bless us all. Out here in Birmingham, UK, we stay tuned to that debate talk for you radio show. Just want to shout out my man Sal and all the other hosts. Make sure you keep it locked right here from the Express Truth. Peace. All praises, all honor, all glory to the supreme intellect of the universe. This is Nasi Yashuva of Shom Reha Torah in Atlanta. And if I'm not reading my Torah or suplexing some false deity, I'm listening to my man, Sal Showtime, and Debate Talk for You Radio. Beautiful. Keep doing the good work, brother, bringing forth the information and spreading that love. This is Renald Francois, representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out Debate Talk for You Radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime.
What's going on, everybody? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 6 of the Great Talk for you Radio. Of course, I'm your host, Sal Showtime. We are back with another great show for you guys. Once again, we're officially inside the Lion's Den. <laughs> Right, people, this is the Lions Den segment of Debate Talk for you, where we have the best debates in the world via internet. We have the best special guests to bring forth the information to the masses out there. In my opinion, the Lions Den debates, in my opinion, that have some of the best contenders out, you know, that steps into the Lions Den all across the globe and can go against any debate forum out there, you know. And uh, well, we're looking forward to the day actually where we can ha- that can actually happen. Uh, going against other forums, but uh, I'm glad you guys are here tonight checking out the debate tour for you Lions then, and of course, I see we have a lot of people on the phone lines, I appreciate everybody that's calling in via phone, via Skype, or down to that number, 646-716-7320, <clears throat> excuse me, 646-716-7320, and uh, number 646-716-7320, so as you can guess, this is a debate between an Israelite and a Kemetic representative, a Mayat representative. So, uh, you know, stay tuned, and I'm going to introduce the special guest. I believe one of them are here right now. Uh, I'm in suit 10. If you're out there, you got to press number one. We have a lot of callers out there. So if you're out there, brother, press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Uh, just to let you guys know, we had a powerful, couple powerful shows this week that passed. We had the roundtable yesterday. Uh, are we headed for self-destruction? Uh, so you can check out the archives and go check that out. Powerful conversation about things that's happening within the urban community. And next we're going to have another hot seat segment uh, right here on the Bay Tour View. I think it's next Thursday. We're going to have it in the Black Radio. In the Black Radio is going to be here live. So they're going to be in the hot seat. Again, that's the show where you listen to the audience out there will call in with your questions and your comments from the beginning of the show to the end. And I'm trying to get brothers like uh, King Noble on the show. Uh, you know, for the hot seat segment and uh, other people. As a matter of fact, let me know what you guys who you want who you guys want to see in the hot seat. Uh, send me an email at debate talk view at gmail dot com and I'll try to you know get them in the hot seat. Also, just want to let you guys know the last show for debate talk for you for this season is gonna is gonna be Friday, July first. Friday, July 1st will be the final show for this uh, season of the Bay Talk Free Radio. Of course, we're going to take the summer off. And by the way, we're trying to do the live live debate, actually, in August, but we still we need your support, people. I'm looking at the GoFundMe, and there's only like $25 in there. <laughs> and we need much more than that in order for us to have a live debate going on. So, people, if you want to see the live debate happening, you know, please, we need your support. You know, just go to the GoFundMe and support the brand. We have thousands of listeners all across the globe. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a saying out there that uh, brothers don't support each other, and I would hate to have that people uh, actually make that true. I don't believe that's true. You know, we definitely need to support each other. We we support the brand. So, you know, let's go out there and uh, make it happen. So, you know, let's do the live debate. We want to do it in August, either in Atlanta or in New York City. We want to have two debates on a platform for one night only. And, uh, you know, we're going to get the uh, live stream, the vendors, and the camera crew and all of that. You know, kind of a perfection. We want to make sure it's perfect, you know, for the people out there. So, guys, if you want to see that and you want to make it happen, we need you to go support the GoFundMe and go support that. But uh, let me introduce my first special guest. My first special guest has been on the show before, but actually this is his first time inside the Lions. Then this is Brother Mercy. Welcome to the show. How you doing, Sal Showtime? This is Brother Mercy, a part of the Maziac Judaism community, and I'm glad to be on this uh, Lions Den this afternoon. All right, Brother Mercy, let the people know a little bit about yourself, like how long you've been studying, uh, things of that nature. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Mercy. I'm part of the Maziac Judaism community. Um, I have a Facebook, uh, Mercy Masonic Judaism, studying t- uh, the scriptures for about over 30 years. I've been studying Torah for a very long time. Um, so basically, um, I just really love studying the scriptures. Today's uh, debate is, is limited to the scriptures, as me and my opponent agreed upon. And so uh, we're going to go through Torah and the rest of the scriptures. And we're going to have a very intelligent debate. But, yeah, about me, I love studying the scriptures, and this is what I love to do. And I hope I can learn something today from my brother, and uh, hopefully he can learn something from me. 
And that's all I had to say. All right, now I'm trying to reach out to my brother, uh, Amin Sutan. I actually called him. He said he's going to call me back. But uh, apparently he's not, he didn't call me back yet, so I'm going to have to take a little intermission break in the meanwhile. But before we go there, the topic, the frauds of Kemet's and Israelites. Uh, do you want to give the audience a little clarity on that topic, why the topic is named the frauds of Kemet and Israelites? You know, most people don't know we have a conference call before we have these debates. Uh, but uh, this particular topic might not be clear to the audience. So uh, let the audience know pretty much where you're coming from when it comes to this topic, this concern. that. Okay, yeah, basically uh, how I feel about it is this. As we discussed over the phone, I have a, a, a deep respect for Egypt, which is what they call Kemet, ancient Egypt, which is Kemet. Um, and this brother made some very um, ignorant statements talking about the Torah don't talk about Egypt or it don't talk about Kemet. And I wanted to go through Torah today and show his brother that Kemet in Egypt is all over the Torah, and I have a deep respect for Egypt. However, I have respect for the authentic Egypt, not the Egypt this brother represents, which is a fraud. So what I'm going to prove today is that the Egypt in the Torah is true, but the Egypt these brothers think they are part of, a lot of these brothers are fraudulent. So I'm going to prove today through the scriptures, I'm going to use Torah because each was mentioned many times in Torah, plenty of times in Torah. Egypt is all over Torah. So you can study Torah and learn much about Egypt. So my thing is I want to prove today um, through the Torah my deep respect for authentic Egypt, not this Egypt this brother represents. And so I'm going to show this brother how he is a fraud and how these organizations, a lot of these killing organizations who think they know what they're doing, they don't know what they're talking about because if they don't agree with Torah, it's nine times out of ten, it's probably incorrect. And I don't care what book they read it out of, don't know book, most of these books they reading about, they don't predate the Bible. So the Bible is the most ancient book you can read about. That's reputable. Remember, reputable, that's respected across the world, okay? A lot of these guys read it, authors that are living. These people wrote it within the last 50 to 100 years, you know, and it's dated by people that's living today, you know, who haven't lived thousands of years ago. So I don't, I'm going to show this brother today how the Bible is the most authentic source for finding about authentic Egypt and find about how to live uh, Torah, uh, to observe Torah. But that's, that's all. I don't want to be too long. All right, people, once again, it's the Lion's Den segment of the Big Talk Radio. I just received a text from the brother. I'm in 210. He's going to be here shortly. He said give him about 10 minutes, though, you know, a little technical difficulties with his computer. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a 10-minute yeah, a 10-minute break, or whenever he calls in. I'm going to give it 10 minutes, though. Whenever he calls in, then we're going to, you know, get it get it uh, started. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to play a few songs. Uh, I have the music artist testimony coming back, uh, you know, uh, next Tuesday. Well, Tuesday coming up. And uh, that's one of the segments where I interview uh, righteous artists and we play some of their music live on the air. And we're going to have uh, Rabbi Ben Israel here. Right here on the Beethoven Talking Radio, Hebrew Israelite artist, great music. And I'm going to play maybe one or two of his songs. We're going to play a lot more songs that night. Well, actually, he's gonna be a, the show's going to be at 1 p.m. Yeah, I want to let you guys know. It's going to be Tuesday, 1 p.m. So we're going to have a 1 p.m. show next week on the Big Toffee Radio, the music artist testimony. He's going to be here for an hour. Uh, for the people out there that like his music, we're going to hear from the fans out there. We're going to hear some of his music, and we're going to hear his testimony as well. So let's take a 10-minute break. We're going to hear some of his, uh, my brother Rabbi Ben Israel music. And, again, if there's any artists out there that want to come on the show, the righteous artists out there that want to come on the platform, send me an email at uh, TheBigTalkView at gmail.com. We'll set it up. Again, the last show was on July 1st, so first come, first serve. Want to be on the platform? <laughs> well, let's get this 10 minute intermission break popping. We'll be right back. Welcome to the planet of the beats, the Beat Talk Thing Radio. 
Israelite Israel Judah Listen up, y'all people take time to pay attention I'm speaking in parables, I need your ears to listen I found on the mystery, Israelite history It will not be with hell, so understand our misery The title of Yahuwah, his power and every miracle The creeds which take us instituted in Israel Gave our ancestors strict order, teach the children So the next generation of the nation keeps building Confidence in Yah and all his achievements The light in the Sabbath and all his commandments Not a generation with no sincerity of heart Lack of trust as we lust running from Yah Ephri, I am tucked tail when it was time to fight Refused to follow his laws, so they took flight Forgot his achievements, marvels he showed them Down in Egypt in the plains of Zoan Divided the sea, the water standing tall as dikes Led with a fiery blow cloud at night Splitting rocks, quenching their thirst forever water Streams from rocks and torrents, pure water The only sin against him and did more than ever To find the most high in the midst of the desert Deliberately challenging Yah, demanding food Like, could he give a banquet like they didn't have a clue So torn streamed out, but look, it's bread now So they question about meat, so we let it rain down Take order to the sky, open the doors of heaven Ate the breads of immortals, he took care and fed them He stirred up the east wind, stirred up the south wind He rained down meat like dust, friend Quail thick as the sand Resting on the shore with food in their mouth, but they still wanted more. So Yah's wrath attacked them, killing all the strongest men. Laying down the flower of Israel, low again. Despite they went sinning, no trust in his marvels. Blasted their days and years in the flash. Horrible. Slaughtered them, they sought him and became more eager. Remembering Yah was the rock, their redeemer. But outwardly they flatter him, they turned lies to him. Their hearts were not true, no faith in his covenant. Compassionately, however, repressed his anger. Remembering creatures of flesh, he showed favor. I raised them in the desert, saved them from our oppressor. Rivers of blood, horse fly, frogs and all. Calipitas, locusts, can you see the hell fall? Frogs so sick of more trees, cattle with plague. Flock feverish pets, you feel his rage. Anger's a disaster, anger will free the rain. Striking the firstborn, a ham in the land. Still disloyal, not royal, rejected his hand. No Joseph, no Ephraim, he chose Judah. Chose David with a sense of the hand. You see the future? Greatness to check greatness. Talk with the Titans host here, Callum L. And you're now locked into Debate Talk for You Radio. Why persecute the blind if it fulfills the prophecy? His word won't return void, that's knowledge. See? Seek understanding in all thy ways. False prophets must exist in these last days Kicked out the temple for his name's sake So when I read it in the word, no need to break Off on this path with jewels on my neck Got law of the mother, that's that chain of respect Leaders want to esteem those for gay apparel I rock regular codes, conversating with Pharaoh De Niro, look at the face, give it to him They ain't got nothing to do with his kingdom Believe him, stop fasting like Isaiah 58 There's someone sleeping a block away who has an eight Their plate is the con with food on the ground If you came around That frown will be turned upside down Bound by the thoughts That you haven't figured out And that son of man We waiting on is still without Blinded by Facebook Blinded by YouTube I'm reaching on YouTube Cause I'm like you too Might be blinded by greed Blinded by me Addicted to truth music That's the truth you see Leave I mean like right now I ain't about to finish this song man You get the point Leave Lion of Judah, I I don't know where to begin. Messiah, he'll give the world most 
with a set shirt don't tell I like he ain't can't serve two masses why I even pick between I seen hell in the buildings where people give money lying to their neighbors acting like JC Lusty fact we don't know his name on the Jesus ship we came you don't understand his pain chosen people ask for change man yeah in poverty you rich and I know the blasphemy of them Jews little bricks in the gas of time, you don't understand it's on. Still a light chase, you gon' wrestle with my father's arm. Do you believe it? I put my faith in y'all, bless is the reason. And even though it's hard, that's who I believe in. Before I'm leaving, I'm asking and grieving. Do you believe in? Who do you believe in? I put my faith in y'all, bless is the reason. And even though it's hard, that's who I believe in. Before I'm leaving, I'm asking and grieving. Look, do you believe in? Imagine writing a song, but never jotting a word. Only foretold, but the vision. Just never heard. I am what I am, but that's the shall be. Ancient of days, and the fire saved me. Don't ask me like John if I'm really Eliyahu. I just understand the plan, so let me bear fruit. Snoop Lion changed his name, Malice doing gospel, man. Ever thought why over eyes listen once in the game? Yeah, the hey, Bob, hey, they still tricking you. There's no W, really, it's a double U. The snare trap meant for you to still stumble. The abominations, they do remain humble. But never we protect the sheep with the rod only. Swing that wolves, draw blood, this is back, homie We out here, the spirit in our DNA is calling You feel it in your spirit, yet you hear it stop stalling Do you believe it? I put my faith in y'all, yeah. bless is the reason And you even though it's hard, that's who I believe in Before I'm leaving, I'm asking and grieving Do you believe it? Who do you believe in? I put my faith in y'all, bless is the reason and Shalom, shalom, once again, believing. Rap Bobby and Yashael Listening to the Forgotten Jesus. Son mixtape you know, and that was a tribute to Tupac. Who do you believe in? Um, believing in Yahoo is not hard. You just gotta believe. It's not a burden at all. You know what I mean? Through the Hamashiach Yahusha, all praise is due. So Shalom, call all Yahweh by Shem Shai. It's Brother Chief Priest Alazar for lawyer. A.K.A. the Gorilla Hebrew, representing Exodus 17:15, A.K.A. Detective the Sakari, and you know where I'm at. Every Friday, the Lions Den with Sal Showtime on Debate Talk for you. You can catch me on there often, ripping somebody head off, tearing down some false doctrine. Big shout out to all the Debate Talk for you family and listeners and supporters out there. You know, keep supporting the movement, and you know, beautiful edification is getting put out to the masses right now. So again, you know Shalom and call Hello Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Yeah, so that was the music right there. Rabbi Ben Israel is going to be here this Tuesday in the Music Artist Testimony at 1 p.m. If you want to hear more of his songs, his interviews, things of that nature, you know, I'm feeling the music. I'm feeling the music, you know what I mean? We're still waiting for my brother Armin Suten to call in to get this debate started. And uh, we, we're sorry for the delay, people. I know we have a lot of people standing by waiting uh, for the debate to go down on social media, on the phone lines. And, uh, you know, the brother's trying to work on some technical difficulties and hopefully, you know, you know, it'll be all worked out. But let me bring back our brother Mercy. Brother Mercy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, man. We thought about that music right there, brother. <laughs> it was good. It was good, man. It was good. It was very good. Yeah, man. I was, I, was, I was saying we need some more um, singers, though, you know, that represent, um, you know, the Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? We don't have too many singers. We've got a lot of rappers out there, though. <laughs> more, more singers, you know what I mean? I'm actually working yeah, on something too. Yeah, we got a lot of rappers. Yeah, working on, rappers, you know. Man. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so the I'm working on, I'm working on that. Maybe the ladies can see. Yeah, it's a lot of you know? that's, that's, that's a lot of it's a lot of females representing too singing, but we need some more of the brothers. It's like the brothers don't want to sing no more, man. They just want to rap, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so you know, <laughs> yeah, man. You know, we got to bring that singing back. So you know, I'm working on something though. You know, I'm working on something. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna come out though. I'm working on something. You know, bring that right to singing back. You know, but um, brothers yeah, used to brother sing back in the day, Sal. Yeah, it had Hello? a little label and everything going on. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, okay, yeah. brothers used to sing back in the day. You're right. Brothers used to sing back in the day. <laughs> You're right. Keep sweating. The brothers used to sing. Yeah. Hey, they keep sweating. All the brothers, they used to sing back in the day. That's how they got their ladies. Yeah. They used to sing to them. 
<laughs> yeah, man. So we're gonna work on those things though. But um, yeah, man. So hold on, let me um, let me try to call the brother again, and hopefully we can. Okay, he's calling right now. So stand by, y'all. Stand by. I'm gonna let you know what's okay. going on. All right, stand by. Yeah, Shalom. I want to give a shout out to Sal at the Big Talk for You. What's going on? Hey, the Big Talk for You is where it's at. You know, get your verses straight. Put yourself on record. Come on board. Present what you got. If anyone try to cut you off, Sal will just mute that guy's mic. You know, he'll let you express what you got. He'll let you present what you studied for. Let the audience decide if what you got, you know, is inside the scriptures. Debate talk for you once again. Shout out to Sal. Terrific job. Hey, you can press the number one or find yourself on a lion's den. Peace and blessings, family. This is your good, humble brother, Bassim, representing the DMV area. And when I'm not holding down my mid level position in corporate America, I'm tuned into the most respected debate show on the globe. That's debate talk for you with the esteemed host, Sal Showtime. All right, people, I believe it's on now. It's official. My brother's here. He's on the phone line. This is Amen Su Ten. Welcome to the show. Can you hear me, brother? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you yeah, what's up? Hello? Yeah, what's happening? Yeah, what's how, up? You, how you feeling? What's Doing happening? all right. What's all right, up? man. You ready for this? You ready, man? You ready for this debate, brother? <laughs> yeah, oh, my, my computer crashed, but yeah, I can still go, though. All right, cool, man. Uh, for those who are unaware, though, let's give a few a brief, brief background, a little brief background, how long you've been studying, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I've been studying for about three to five years. Uh, my main area of study is, uh, Kemet. Uh, and the reason why I choose Kemet is because I believe that the war kind of started in Kemet and I think it'll end with Kemet, you know, when the truth of Kemet is revealed. Um, and then my second area of why I study is that you know, I just I just feel that the Abrahamic religions have been a burden on black people. Um, and the truth needs to be told about those as well. Um, and, you know, just black history and just knowledge in general. You know, you, you can never not have enough knowledge. That's pretty much it. Now, I was telling the people uh, earlier, uh, the topic is uh, the frauds of Kemet and Israelites. That's the topic of the show. But uh, from your perspective, just to get some clarity for those who are not clear on the topic, let them know what is this topic, you know, entails when it comes to your side of the debate. Go ahead. Well, the the topic uh, is not really Israelite versus Kemet because uh, we already kind of had that debate. This one is more of well, this brother said that African Americans aren't uh, Egyptians. So if African Americans aren't Egyptians, then they're not Israelites either. So, you know, my thing is to prove that African Americans are, in fact, uh, the ancient Egyptians, um, and that even the Africans in Africa are also the ancient Egyptians. Um, and I think it's fairly easy to prove. So this brother is, I guess, he's going to try and prove that Egypt is Egypt, and that these other people are. Um, not Egyptians, uh, especially the African Americans. So that's kind of my topic uh, for tonight. Uh, now, Brother Mercy actually called. Brother Mercy, if you out there, 
You got to press number one. Press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. In the meanwhile, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break down the rules and regulations for the debate out there for the, those that are new to Debate Talkie Radio so you can uh, know what's going on. Uh, here's the rules uh, for the format. Of course, we're going to start off with an opening statement. That's going to be 12 minutes each, opening statement. Uh, when we get to the two-minute mark, you're going to hear this sound. That means there's two minutes left of your time. And once the time is totally up, you're going to hear this sound. That means time is up. So after that, we're going to go to the first rebuttal. That's going to be 10 minutes each. The second and third rebuttal is going to be 8 minutes each. After that, we're going to have the cross-examination part of this debate. Uh, each person has prepared several questions to ask one another. That's going to be 10 minutes each. Uh, due to time constraints, the maximum amount of time to answer a question will be one minute, guys. Once again, due to time constraints, the maximum amount of time to answer a question will be one minute. Once the one minute, one minute is up, you're going to hear this sound. That means it's time to go on to the next question. In the process of asking your question or answering the question, please make it brief. The person on the receiving side being asked questions, please save your questions for when it's your cross-examination time. Of course, everybody knows there's no foul language on debate talk for you. We keep it clean, keep it professional. That's why we consider it as the most respected debate form in the world, debate talk for you. So once again, keep it clean, keep it professional. And, of course, uh, please please speak one person at a time so to listen to the audience and I can gain for understanding. I repeat, please speak one person at a time during the cross-examination process. After that, I'm going to take an eight-minute eight minute intermission break, you know, let the fellas relax for a little while, and then we're going to come back to my favorite part of the show, the public Q&A. That's where, where you, the listening audience, can call in live with your questions and your comments. The number is 646-716-7320. You got to do is press number one, and I'll add to the conversation. As a matter of fact, there's people pressing number one way in advance, because they know how it is in the, in the Q&A segment of the show. We have a lot of people that want to ask questions, so they press number one patiently and stand by. So if you want to definitely secure your spot and asking the question, press number one right now, and we'll get to the public Q&A segment of the show, we can hear from you more, you know, it's going to be more guaranteed that we hear from you guys. All right, so that, again, you, gotta, you guys got to also keep it clean, keep it professional, there's no foul language in your part as well, and after that, we're going to have the final statements, that's going to be seven minutes each. So, let's get to this debate, being that we had a little delay, let's start it up, we're going to start off with Brother Mercy, Brother Mercy is here, being that it's first time, that's the rules of the show, if it's your first time in the Lions, then you got to start first. So let's open up his phone line and go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, brother uh, Sal. Uh, Sal Showtime. Basically, today's debate uh, is about uh, the fraudulent uh, of the Kemet community, uh, some of the frauds that exist. Um, one problem I have with the Kemet community is uh, well, what this brother represents is the frauds that exist. And one of the frauds that exist is they attack Torah, which I don't understand. Uh, I really don't understand how they attack Torah, but some of them do accept the Septuagint, uh, which includes the Torah. So that seems kind of contradictory. But in any other way, um, I, I feel that the uh, Torah is a very reputable book. And knowing that um, the Bible is the most published book in history, um, there are more publishings of the scriptures than any other book out there. So I don't understand how uh, the Bible or the, Abra- uh, the story of Abraham could be detrimental um, to to black people. I just don't get it, especially when Abraham visits Egypt and the Torah mentions Egypt over 300 times. So I, I just don't get how, I mean, if you read Torah, you won't find a whole lot about Egypt. So I don't get how you can be anti-Tor and be pro-Egypt, which is why I think these, this group of people is a fraud. I mean, Egypt and Israel over there, they don't talk to one another, but they're not at, at animosity. One Egypt, they're not fighting against Israel. Uh, Israel has other enemies around them, but Egypt is not one of them. So I'm trying to figure out if Egypt and Israel are able to get along to a certain degree. Why these Kemet people got a problem with people who absorb the Torah? Now, Egypt and Israel ain't friends. However, they just don't they just don't talk to one another, and they just each mind their own business. So I'm just asking why the, this Kemet community can't just mind their own business, stay away from the Mazak Judaism community, and just just speak on what you know. 
but uh, but these guys want to attack Torah, those who uh, follow the faith of Abraham. But anyway, I, I'm gonna give a few of uh, some scriptures because uh, this is a scriptural debate. I want to remind my brother, um, we, all, all this stuff he going tr- he may try to pull in this debate. Um, some of the stuff just to let you guys know from the um, Kemet community. Only only evidence that is acceptable in this debate is scripture. So that's for the callers as well. You must provide scripture in order to um, be acceptable evidence. So anyway, uh, Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. It says, okay, and, and this comes from my brother on, on our conference call. Apparently he didn't understand genealogy. And um, he had some questions about genealogy. And so let me just tell you where Egypt came from according to the uh, Torah. It says, um, Genesis chapter 10, verse 6, The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, um, and Canaan. Okay? So as we see here, um, um, these are the four sons of, um, of Ham. All right? So um, the sons of Ham were Egypt. One of the sons, I'm not trying to say it's Egypt. Okay, um, this is where the descendants of of this is where the Egyptians came from. They came from Ham. However, the Egyptians that exist in Egypt today uh, consider themselves they don't consider themselves Africans. Uh, they consider themselves Arabs. So that's another problem this brother is going to have. Why they don't acknowledge you? You know. So why why are the why are the Egyptians the official Egyptians today? or record not acknowledging you as one of their own. So that's going to be another problem he's going to have. All right. So, and then I'm going to go to uh, uh, Genesis 1. The promises given to Abraham uh, was that he would become a great nation. And that's in Genesis chapter 12. Now, the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. So this brother needs to understand that if you curse Abraham, um, then the Most High will curse you. I'm just letting, that's what the Torah says. So cursing Abraham is not going to help your debate today. And in all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then it goes on to say, and see, this is, uh, I want to present to my brother today, to understand that the Most High gave Abraham a promise. Now, a promise where a lot of people don't understand when they read in the scriptures, if you're going to become a great nation, you need a standard or a picture of that. And the picture of a great nation during this time was Egypt, because during this time, Egypt, as it is today, is a great nation, is a sovereign nation. So when the Most High made a promise to Abraham to become a great nation, it was to be like Egypt, because that's why what's the first place Abraham went after the Most High made the promise. He went to Egypt. There was a famine in the land, in verse 10, and Abram went down to Egypt to well there, for the famine was severe in the land. So when there was a famine in the land, where did people go? Where did Abraham go? He sojourned on to Egypt. So we see here the Torah is explicit. Egypt is the great, and, and Egypt is, I believe, is where he got the custom, or he learned the custom of circumcision, uh, that we Masonics, uh, well, I don't know about all Masonics, but we Masonics practice circumcision on the eighth day. Uh, now, the Egyptians don't practice the circumcision on the eighth day, but they do practice circumcision. And circumcision on the eighth day is, is mentioned in the Torah, okay? And that was the sign of the covenant. But the sign, but see, how did Abraham know what circumcision was? How did he know? He knew it because the Egyptians were already practicing circumcision. And he, he he learned it from them, and this is clearly seen because his he his wife gets a handmaid from Egypt, which was Hagar. Um, so Abraham grew um, from the Egyptians, and then Moses wrote the Torah, and uh, Moses was educated in Pharaoh's house again in Egypt. He had Egyptian education; that's why he was so well educated. So again, the Torah gives much credit to Egypt. Matter of fact, the person who wrote Torah was educated by the Egyptians. So again, uh, before this brother come out with some nonsense talking about we plagiarized Egypt 
or we stole from Egypt. Let me give this brother a brief lesson on what plagiarism and what stealing is. Stealing is if I quote somebody and don't give them credit for what they're saying. Stealing is if I take your words and I try to treat it as my own. And Torah does not do that. Moses did not do that. When he wrote Torah, he made it clear that he was he was raising Pharaoh's house. He made it clear that he was he received an Egyptian education. He made it clear that Abraham had Egyptian handmaid, which was Hagar. He made it clear when there was a family land, Abraham, Abram went to Egypt to receive sustenance and to receive provision. He receives provision and he was able to stay alive and his family was able to go on because of Egypt. Okay? So when you give somebody credit, that's not plagiarism. But see, a lot of our brothers are not educated and don't understand the rules of writing literature. That's why I know you brothers can't, you, you don't even know what real literature is. Because literature, I, I could quote as many people as I want. As, in fact, the more people I quote makes my literature more reputable and more respected by the world community. If I quote people who are respected by the community, then uh, my literature will be more reputable. Okay? I don't come up with my own nonsense and write a book, then then that's not then you have a book of nonsense. Okay? But if I write a book and I quote people who are respected by the international community, and which Egypt is, because all of our sciences come from Egypt, math, science, all of our sciences come from Egypt. I mean, you you ain't got to be you that's just common sense. That's common sense, brother. So the thing is, no, it wasn't stolen. But we give credit where credit is due. Now, Egypt was a nation and a great nation. However, what you represent is not a nation because you don't even have a nation. And the nation of Egypt is not in America. It's over there by Israel. Okay? So what you represent is a fraud. If I want to know something about Egypt, I'm going and fly a plane to Egypt. Okay? And learn about Egypt. Not gonna learn it from you guys because you most most of you guys now some of you guys are, are respected. I respect some of you guys because at least some of you guys can speak different languages and have and have lived and have, have and have taken trips in different countries. So I do have respect for some of you guys, but most of you guys you just following the leader, you know. So you you, you and I think you're one of those follow the leaders. I, I don't think you you're very knowledgeable. Um, I think you're just one of those guys. That's, you're like a par, a par, a par, you're like a parakeet. You just repeat a parakeet. Just repeat what he hears. You don't know what he's saying though. So I think that's like you. You know, you you repeat what these other guys are saying, but you don't really know what you're saying. So I, I'll say this. Uh, you know, I'm almost out of time. I, I'll say this closing, and my opening statement that um, the real Egypt is the Egypt. Uh, by Israel. That's the Egypt that I respect. Okay? That's the Egypt that's a sovereign nation. Okay? Just to make it clear. And that's the Egypt that's mentioned in the Bible. Okay? Because Egypt was a nation back when this scripture was written. Thousands of years ago, it was a nation. You follow what I'm saying? All right? It wasn't just a group of black people that got together and called themselves Kim Kemites. No. Nah, it was a real nation. Okay? So that's all I wanted to say. My closing opening statement. Thank you, Sal Showtime. All right, people, once again, it's the Lion's Den segment of Debate Talkie Radio, the frauds of Kevin and Israelites. That's the topic of this debate, the frauds of Kevin and Israelites. My special guest debating tonight is Brother Mercy. Once again, it's his first time debating, and we have uh, Amin Sutan. This is, I believe it's his second time debating inside the Lion's Den. Uh, the number is 646-716-7320. So now let's go to Amin Sutan with his opening statement. You can go ahead, brother. Hey, what's up? What's up? This is uh, Amin again. Um, yeah, you know, Mercy, he brought up some interesting points. Um, but basically, you know, he he talked about the Bible and he, he talked about things that we already know. You know, he talked about Abraham and this and that. Um, <clears throat> and I think one of his points was that, you know, why do people from Kemet uh, attack the Torah and attack Abraham? Well, it should be very obvious. I mean, uh, Abraham, 
who's from Earl of Chaldea, he invaded Egypt, which means he basically invaded Africa. And this is why the Abrahamic religions are so dangerous, because it allows black people to adopt the mindset of their conqueror. And that's why mercy would defend Abraham blindly without even reading the Bible. Like uh, Abraham went in there, he deceived Pharaoh. Um, You know, he was blessed by this God that no one really knows. Um, He was wicked. Moses was wicked. Joseph and the, the 12 tribes were wicked. And then I think the brother got confused on the word plagiarism stealing. Um, plagiarism means like when you basically copy something and then graft it as your own. And that's exactly what the uh, Hebrews did. They grafted the Egyptian religion and culture and made it their own. You know, um, just like if you look at the word Torah itself. Now, see, this brother's not going to understand this. But the word Torah literally means the fertility, or I'm sorry, the fertility of the Taurus bull, of Ra. You know, so people don't understand it. The word Torah means to Ra. It's the, it's the books that were meant to Ra. Because the gods of the, Hebrew, of the Israelites were Egyptian deities. You know, that's why if you read in the Bible, it says what? It says, and yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. And it says, Egypt are my people. It says, uh, Assyria is my handiwork. And it just says, Israel is my inheritance. But it says, uh, Egypt is my people. So obviously, if the Egyptians are the people of God, God must be an Egyptian God. And God is an Egyptian God. God is basically all of the Egyptian gods broken apart and mixed with a few Canaanite gods here and there, you know. Um, so unless you understand esoteric wisdom, then you won't be able to put these correlations together. And then my second part of why this Torah and this Abrahamic faith is so dangerous is that it allows black men specifically to align with their oppressors thinking and turn around and oppress black people. And that's why he can hold Abraham in high self-esteem or high esteem uh, and hold Kemet and low esteem when Kemet is a black culture. You know, and then he kind of confused something earlier. He said, well, you know, Israel and Egypt can get along. You know, I don't see why. You know, what he doesn't understand is that the people that are in Egypt today were not the same people that were in ancient Egypt. You know, there's an abundance of evidence that shows that these modern Arabs that have settled in Egypt migrated there. You know, there's even ancient papyruses that show these Asiatic, you know, whatever you want to call them, Arabs coming into Kemet. You know, and that's what African people do. Like, you know, we welcomed them in there. They rose to power and they conquered Egypt and they assimilated all the knowledge and technology of Egypt and grafted it as their own. And then the sad thing is, is that they use this knowledge and technology to then go abroad and basically conquer uh, other minority groups, you know, specifically the uh, African. So basically, if you are up under Abrahamic faith, say, take, you know, Judaism or whatever, and you go by the Torah, you are up under a anti-Egypt, anti-African, anti-Black philosophy and religion. You know, because he says, well, you know, the Bible mentions Egypt, you know, I don't know, 400 times, but he failed to mention that every time the Bible mentions uh, Egypt, the Torah, it's in a negative light. You know, Pharaoh was evil. Um, the Egyptians were decadent. You know, um, God's going to curse Egypt and, you know, throw a perverse spirit on them. You know, first got to ask yourself, why would God be jealous of Egyptian gods in the first place if God created everything? Why would he be jealous of his own creation? And why would the creator of the universe possess a human emotion? See, that's what people don't address. See, and the answer to that is that what we call God is, in Hebrew, is called Elohim. And Elohim is the Jews themselves. See, so basically, someone that follows the Torah, especially if they're black, they're just another wannabe Jew. You know, they're, they're nothing special. It's the same with the Christian. 
if you're a black Christian, you're a wannabe Roman. And if you are a black Muslim, you are a wannabe Arab. And these religions are dangerous to black people. Like, everybody's heard of the Moors, right? Well, the black Moors joined the Arabs and then went back into Africa and enslaved the African. Why? Because those books cause you to adopt the mindset of your oppressor, and then you don't see black people as your people. It's the same with the Christian. Every single black Christian is anti-Egypt and pro-white and got a white Jesus on their wall just because they've been taught that since birth, you know, and they never look at Egypt and its greatness. And it's the same with brothers that either call themselves Israelites or if you just join Judaism, you're always going to have an anti-Egyptian uh, slant to you. And when you have an anti-Egyptian slant, you basically have self-hatred and you're going to have a degree of hatred towards Africa, which is your own people. So um, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, so, you know, am I anti-Torah? I think there's a lot of wisdom in the Torah, but I think the truth needs to be told about the Torah, that it's, uh, it's a plagiarized, rewritten text. Um, you know, and then another thing the brother was also saying is that, you know, African Americans aren't Egypt, you know, Egyptians and, you know, Egyptians didn't like settle in that area and call themselves, you know, Kemites or Egyptians. But see, what people don't understand is that like, uh, Egypt started off as a, uh, you know, a nomadic, you know, a semi-nomadic, uh, civilization, right? And then they mastered agriculture and then these people just became intellectual, you know, and they just started developing things. Um, but what people don't understand, like Egypt is the east side of Africa. Like you got an east side of the hood and a west side. The west side is where the West African was taken to America. So I would be a West African, right? And then an Ethiopian, maybe an Eritrean, uh, possibly someone from Sudan, they would be classified as the East African. So just because I'm on the uh, continent, I'm on the west side of Africa, that doesn't mean that I'm not related to an Ethiopian. There are genetic cousins. Our hair texture is the same. There's parts of Ethiopia that you go where the people are really dark. You know, it's just the groups came in and they mixed with the Ethiopian. And in the major cities, the Ethiopians are lighter. But if you go into the outskirts and the tribal areas, they're dark skinned and you wouldn't really be able to tell them apart from any West African, you know, because a Kenyan looks a lot like a Somalian and a Somalian uh, can look a lot like an Ethiopian. You know, we're all cousins and we're all people, you know, and we had a great empire. We had a great religion and we just got conquered. And the sad thing is, is that these brothers today who have self-hatred, who don't want to identify with Africa, who don't want to identify with Kemet, they join their master, whether it be the, uh, the rabbi, the imam, or the pastor, and they side with them and put down a, and attack our own people. And they use the same, they read out of the same book that the people that enslaved and oppressed us read out of too. And they don't understand that. When the Jew enslaved black people, he was reading the Torah. When the Caucasian man enslaved black people, he was reading the New Testament. That's why it says, slaves obey your masters. And when the Muslim enslaved the African, he was reading out of the Quran, you know, where he was calling black people Bilal. So that's why I'm anti-Torah, because Torah is anti-me. Torah is anti-black. You know, you ain't never going to read the Torah and you're going to find something pro-black in there. Like, you know, Pharaoh might have, you know, it's not going to highlight Pharaoh in a positive way or anything that the Egyptians did because the Torah is not an Egyptian book. It's a plagiarized, I would say that the supernatural uh, things in this book are plagiarized, but this book is pro-Jew. So, of course, it's going to be anti-everything else. You know, it, it was written to be that way. So why would I want to sit there and join a book that's anti-myself? You know what I'm saying? I, I'd have to have a lot of brain cells missing to do something like that. So that's that. I'll, I'll wait for Mercy's rebuttal. All right, that was the 
opening statement part of this debate. So now we got to go into the first re- uh, first rebuttal part of this debate. And, uh, you know, we have a lot more debate to go. I appreciate the people that's calling in. And I appreciate the people that's actually sharing on our social media, sharing on our personal page, let people know that debate talk views on the air. Remember, you can call in with your questions and your comments. If you know you're going to have a question for the Q&A segment, this person number one will add you in later on. You want to hear from the people out there. But let's get into this first rebuttal part of this debate. It's 10 minutes each. Let's go to Brother Mercy. Go ahead. You know, this debate is already over, and it just started. As I stated to the listening audience, if they were listening, you're supposed to use the scripture to support your argument. And if you go back and roll back the tape, because I listened to this brother talk for 12 whole minutes. It might be less, but give or take a minute. South Sotan gave him 12 minutes, so in 12 minutes, about 12 minutes. This brother didn't mention one verse. So therefore, you've already lost, brother. Because this is a debate based on the scriptures. I told you that before we entered this debate. You said you're going to use the scriptures to show me how what I believe is fraudulent. Now, I'm trying to understand how you're going to use your, okay, let me say this. First of all, you don't even know much about the Torah. And because I can tell you don't, because if you knew anything about Torah, you would understand this. Uh, Genesis, I've read a verse. I actually read a verse. If you go back and look at my tape, I read verses out the scriptures. Okay? This brother didn't read any verses. I read a verse in Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. Uh, and I also read a verse where it talks about how Abraham, when it was a family land, Abraham went to Egypt. So how is that negative? That's positive. Because if Abraham not went to Egypt, he may have died of hunger and thirst. Egypt had was the great nation. Egypt had provision. You see that here in Genesis. It's not a negative light. Egypt is what sustains Israel. If you read Torah, you would understand that. Okay? And that's why I tried to prove to this brother earlier when I read It showed that the first nation Abraham went to after uh, God made the promise to Abraham to become a great nation, the first nation Abraham went to was Egypt. Okay? So I I don't get how that's negative. That's actually very positive. And then I told his brother that Moses, the one who wrote Torah, was educated by Egyptians. He received it because, why? Because the Hebrews, if you know anything about the Hebrew language, and this is what some of the more educated Kamites point out. It's not a widespread language. It's only spoken by a very few people in the world. So the Egyptian language was a more formalized and more recognized nation or language like English is today. Like English, you don't have to be in America to learn English. You can learn English in Africa because people in Africa are teaching English. Because English is an international, well, I won't say international, but it's a more formalized language was recognized by many different nations. Okay? The Hebrew language is not like that. Okay? All right? So that's number one. That's the first thing. All right? Now, this brother talked about if he he, if he was in Africa, uh, if he was part of Africa, he would be cousins of Egypt. Brother... I'm not sure if this, I don't know, is this brother might be from Africa. I'm not sure. He don't even have an African accent, so I don't know. But I think this brother is in America. I'm in America. I'm not in Africa right now while I'm on this debate. I'm in America. Have I been outside of America? Yes, I'm in America now. So because I'm in America, we speak English, okay? Now, the reason why I say what I'm saying is because as long as you're in America, you influence, you have the European and the Roman influence, okay? And that's even true in Africa because the British colonies colonized many of the nations of Africa. So that's true across the water as well. However, at least if you're in Africa, you you can learn the language and some of the customs that are there. So I would say this. The Egyptians that are in Egypt today call themselves Arabs. They do not identify with you. That's the problem I have with you. Why don't they identify with you? You follow what I'm saying? He didn't catch that. 
He really missed that. If you call yourself an Egyptian, why don't the Egyptians identify with you? Okay? Because what you become, you become like the 13 colonies in America. You become a bunch of 13 gangs is what you become. You become a bunch of gangs, unrecognized people. People, that's what a gang is. Somebody who, who people come together who, who, who recognize themselves or something, but there's nobody outside that gang recognizes it. So that's what you are. You you just a, you just somebody who who, who calls yourself a, a Kimite, but you have no evidence. Do you even have an Egyptian passport? Do you have an Egyptian passport? Okay. All right. I mean, what what proof when you when you drive your car, you get pulled over by the police? Does it say Egyptian on your Kimite on your driver? Does it say black? What does it say? Now be honest. Be straight. Now be straight with the people here. What does it say on your driver's license? Does it say Kimite? Or does it say black man? I'm going to go back to the scriptures. All right. So, see, you got to be honest. And I like having an honest debate. And this is what this is about honesty. And uh, going back to the promise that God made to Abraham, he said, oh, yeah. God, uh, I don't remember the verses I read. It didn't say anything about God cursing Egypt. It, the verses I read talked about those who curse Abraham would be cursed. But the Egyptians that's in Egypt today, I don't think they curse Abraham like you guys do. So you don't have to be worried about getting cursed. If you ain't cursing Abraham, you ain't got nothing to worry about. All I'm asking you to do, I don't curse your people. I don't curse your leaders. Okay? Well, actually, I don't even know who your leaders are, really, to be honest with you. I don't know who your leaders are. But I don't curse them. Can't read about them because they're not in the Bible. But um, Abraham's in the Bible. So your, your, your guys, whoever they are, they're not listed in the Bible. So, you know, I mean, so I don't know. But at least all I'm saying, don't curse Abraham. I mean, I don't curse the Muslim leaders, Farrakhan, whatever. I don't curse Farrakhan. I, I, have, I have a general respect for Farrakhan. Even though I'm not a Muslim, I have a general respect for Farrakhan. I don't curse him. Okay, so all I'm asking you to do is show some respect, okay, because at least uh, it is recognized and respected. So anyway, move on real quick. Uh, um, the, the scriptures, uh, it talks about how uh, God will bless Abraham, and it talks about actually in Genesis, the only one that's cursed is Canaan. I wanted to bring that out. It says curse be Canaan in Genesis chapter 9. It didn't say curse be Egypt. Oh, yeah, that brings me to another argument. And this brother brought up a point about the white man used the Bible to oppress black people. He exact, he is absolutely correct. But the white man also made it against the law for us to read, too. So after, after blacks been get, got the ability to read and got their civil rights, they read the Bible and said, oh, wait, hold on. All black people not cursed. It was only Canaan. Because as I read earlier, Ham had four sons. Okay, Canaan was not his only son. The only one that was cursed was Canaan. But the white man said, well, all y'all black people, the reason why y'all cursed is because God cursed Canaan. Okay, first of all, Ham had four sons. Only one of his sons was cursed, and that was Canaan. Okay, running out of time. The first, the only son that was cursed was Canaan. Okay, just give his brother a little uh, genealogy lesson, because his brother don't know anything about genealogy. Okay, only one of the sons was cursed, not all four sons. Okay, and Egypt was one of his sons, and they were not cursed because they were a great nation. They couldn't have been cursed because they were a great nation during this time. They were blessed. Okay, so anyway, um, he had four sons. Only one son was cursed. According to the Torah, I'm reading, only one son, cursed me Canaan. He had three other sons. Egypt was one of them. Egypt was blessed during the time. They was first. That's why Abraham went there. Okay, because it was blessed. It was a blessed place to be. If you're, if you're struggling, you'll go to a blessed place so you can be blessed. Egypt was that place. Okay. Now, um, so Canaan was one of the sons that was cursed. And it was the Canaanites that were driven out by the Hebrews, the, the, the ancient Israelites drew out the Canaanites. Okay? Not the other three sons. Matter of fact, the Israelites did not drive out Egypt. And this brother's wrong when he said Abraham attacked Egypt. Abraham didn't attack Egypt. He never attacked Egypt. He went into Egypt. Okay? And traded with them. He never attacked them. He couldn't attack them. Just the army too strong for Abraham. Okay? All right? So anyway, I'm done. All right, we still 
on the first rebuttal part of this debate. So now let's go to Amin to 10. Ten minutes. Go ahead. Hey, what's up? Amin is back. Uh, so basically, this brother says, oh, we're supposed to quote the Bible, right? But all the things that he quoted is stuff that we already know. I never said that Egypt was cursed. I said that God placed a perverse spirit on Egypt so that Egypt may stagger around like the drunkard in his own vomit. What kind of God is that? That don't sound like no good God to me. And what he doesn't understand, too, is that Abraham is the bad guy. What you doing in Egypt in the first place? You know, he could have wandered to China. He could have wandered to Greenland. You know, he wandered into Egypt because Egypt was already wealthy. It was already established. You know, they try and promote that lie like uh, Israel made uh, Egypt great. That's not true. Egypt was already established when the Israelites came in. They'd already had everything built up. Now, there's, now the, the foreign workers and craftsmen, the Asiatics, did contribute to Egyptian knowledge and technology, but hence the word contribute, they were contributing to something that was already developed. So, like I said, if you study under mercy, and you study the Torah, he's just going to beat you to death with verses that you already know. You know, he's going to say, well, Genesis, this, and genealogy, that. He's never going to give you the real wisdom of the Torah. He don't study the Kabbalah. You know, I tried to ask him, what does the word mercy mean in Hebrew? He's like, I don't know. He doesn't study Hebrew. Uh, I also study uh, Hebrew. See, and the reason why I study Hebrew is because Hebrew is a Semitic language, which actually brings you closer to Egypt. Another thing, too, is this brother doesn't understand that we got the Internet nowadays. Everybody knows that Abraham never existed. He's a fictional, he's a cartoon character. That's why if you type in Abraham, you don't see no real statue of Abraham. You see a cartoon pops up. But see, if you type in an Egyptian, say like Tunk Tunk Amun, a cartoon don't pop up. His gold mask pops up. Why does Tonk Amun wear a gold mask? Because that gold mask represents the sun. Tutank Amun was the son of Amun. He was the son of the sun. So the wisdom of the Kemites is far superior to the wisdom of the people that read the Torah and the Bible and the Quran. Them people are the uh, babies in the mystery school. So just by even looking at Kemet makes you wiser than someone that reads the Torah. They don't even know what they're reading in their own books. And he's not reading it in Hebrew. He's, he's stuck reading that in English. And Moses, too, he's another fictional character. There wasn't no dude walking around named Moses that was parting trillions of gallons of water. Those are all myths. Myths spun for the uh, black mind to believe these lies, see? And then he said some other confusion like, well, the Egyptians, you know, the modern Egyptians in 2016 wouldn't recognize you. You don't have a passport. Uh, it's not that they should recognize me. It's I don't recognize them in my land that they uh, went into. See, he doesn't understand that the word Egypt means land of Ptah. It means Egypt Ptah, land of Ptah, one of the Egyptian gods. So, and you can find a statue of Ptah. He existed. You can't find no uh, statue or, or tomb of uh, Yeshua or Moses or Abraham or Sarai. Because they don't exist. He don't understand the wisdom of the Egyptians. The Egyptians were obsessed with the sun and the moon. That's why if you ask a Christian how many gods there are, they say, well, there's one God. Well, what do you call a faith, you know, a faith-based religion with one God? It's called monotheism, the worship of one deity. And who is that one deity? That one deity is the moon. That's why the first three letters in monotheism is mon for moon. That's why you have a moon's day. M-O is short for moon. That's why you have a Moses and his connection with the moon. And that's why Moses does what? He climbs Mount Sinai, right? Which he climbs the moon mountain of sin. Because a mountain, when you look at it, looks like a big titty. So sin is one of the ancient name of the, one of the ancient Sumerian deities. And the Egyptians called the moon men. That's where you get the word, words like mind and mental and menstrual, because we know that the moon controls the tides, and it also controls the menstrual cycles of the female, and it controls the waters of the human being. So if you know that the moon does that kind of control on a human being, nobody asks, well, what kind of influence does the sun have? Well, the Egyptians erected these things called obelisks, and obelisks, the, the letter O represents the female opening. 
right? And then Bell is just like Bell and the dragon, like Bell is mentioned in the Bible. Bell can be B E L or B A A L, Ba L, right? So we have O, Ba L, and Isk, like an asterisk. So Isk means star. And star is short for like Ishtar, Isis, and Astarte. And star, and the word star means God. You know, that's why we have performers that are stars that are little gods that are idols. That's what an Egyptian god is. People say, oh, Egyptian god is an idol. An Egyptian god is not an idol. It's basically someone was about to die. They wanted to immortalize themselves. So they built a statue as a way to remember this wisdom of this person and their ancestors. It, it was a form of ancestor adoration that the Europeans call worship. So back to Abraham and Moses. So if Moses never existed, and in Hebrew, his name is Moshe, and the first two letters on Moses is M-O, and remember, M-O stands for moon. That's why Moses is connected with the moon. We got Abraham. Who is Abraham connected with? He's connected with the sun. So the brother like, who he is? I don't know. He, of course I know Hebrew. So Ab, Abba in Hebrew means father. And then Ra is the name of the sun in ancient Egypt, right? And then Ham means from the land of Ham, which means Kim. So uh, the word Abraham also has the word Ram hidden in it. That's why you have the connection with the constellation Aries, Ram, and Ra. That's what Abraham represents. He wasn't a real person. So Abraham literally means the first seed of the house of Ra when the sun is in the constellation of Aries. And that's why they gave you the story of uh, Abraham uh, sacrificing his son, or maybe it was Jacob, one, one of those two cartoons. But the thing is that when, when Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, he was actually performing a, what's called a son sacrifice to the Egyptian deity named Amun-Ra. Right, And Amun-Ra was always depicted as a ram. And so because the Jews, when they were in Egypt, they were in defiance of the Egyptians. So to piss off the Egyptians, they would always slaughter a ram. And see, a ram represents old age, like an old man. And then the lamb represents like a young person, a newborn, you know, it represents springtime or new birth. You know, that's when all the creatures have, you know, babies or whatever. And that's why... Uh, Abraham didn't sacrifice his son. He ended up either sacrifice. I can't remember. It was either a ram or a lamb because uh, Abraham represents the time of Aries when the Jews were in ancient Egypt, not a real person. So when you do some detective work, you'll find that Abraham is actually uh, a pharaoh named Akhenaten. And Akhenaten played the role of both Moses and Abraham, which is sun and, sun and moon magic. So Moses represents the moon, Moses, Musa, meaning drawn from water, and then Abraham has Ra in it. The, so when you're looking at words, right, which is called etymology, they don't put Ra in words just for no reason. You know, just like you have what? A Ra at, a rat, you know, because a rat runs around the field and it's connected to the sun. Or you have a reptile, which comes from Ray. It's, you know, it's the lizard from Ray. So this brother, like I said, he doesn't have what's called esoteric wisdom and epistemology. All he can do is sit there and find a, find a quote in the Bible and repeat a verse, and then he don't even understand the verse that he's reading. I can take any verse, even though my computer crashed, and I could actually explain to this brother the actual true esoteric meaning of that scripture. He can't do that. He won't do that because he's like a fundamentalist Christian. He takes all the stories in the Bible uh, literally. He probably think that Moses parted the waters. He doesn't understand the esoteric wisdom of that story. It's the same with David and Goliath. David gathered up five stones and then busted Goliath in the head. And where did he hit Goliath? He hit him in the forehead. Why? Because the forehead represents the third eye. That's where your third eye is located. And then he cut off Goliath, Goliath's head. Because, you know, they were trying to prove that the God of Israel is more powerful than the 44 gods of the Philistines. So I know the Bible... Uh, we can go passage for passage. What you're not going to get, you're not going to get no esoteric wisdom from this brother at all. You be, you're better off just reading the Bible by yourself because that's all he's doing. He's just taking the Bible and reading to you things 
that you can look up yourself. He hasn't told you nothing that you don't know already tonight. I done told you a whole bunch of stuff. You ain't never heard Abba. All right, people, the topic of the beat, but it was just joined in. The frauds of Kemet and Israelites. The frauds of Kemet and Israelites. Uh, brothers, uh, the beat is Brother Mercy versus Ahmed Sutan. And, again, you can chime in later on. You know that number, 646-716-7320. So we're going to go to the second rebuttal part of this debate. Uh, that's going to be eight minutes each. We're going back to Brother Mercy. Brother Mercy, go ahead. Okay. Again, this. This brother still refuses to use scripture. He wants us to go to some type of physical, uh, philosophy debate uh, about somewhere esoteric, which is what these theologians use to promote their own opinions. I'm using the Bible. This is a biblical debate, which we agreed to before the debate started. I think he's going to try to go here about these esoteric meanings. Uh, but see, the thing is, what this brother don't understand is that tag me, just the fancy word is, I just made up, and I'm going to make you believe whatever I say. That's what esoteric really means. It just means uh, these, these theologians use it. This brother don't – see, what this brother don't understand is, like I told this brother before we started this, but I've been studying for for 30 years, okay? I keep telling this brother this. This brother's not listening. He's not he's not comprehending. Ask his brother some very simple questions. Do you have an Egyptian passport? Are you in the process of gaining Egyptian citizenship? Do you think these things are important to call yourself a Kimite? I mean, come on, man. You don't think that's important? You say your God has promised you this land. You say Egypt means the God. He, he, told, he told me, like, educate me like I ain't know that. You don't think I know your false God didn't promise you that land over there? You don't think I know that? I know that. So since he promised you that land, why haven't you gotten it? Okay? That's my question to you. You say it means the Egyptian God, he promised the, the black gangs over here, they supposed to own the land in Egypt. So why not? Why y'all not going over there and possessing the land? See, this is what the Torah is about. This, this brother don't understand. See, this is what the Torah is about. <laughs> See, these ancient Hebrews didn't stay in America talking about they own some land across the water and never trying to get there. No. Nah. See, these ancient Hebrews said, like Abraham, God promised me this land, and guess what? I'm trying to go get it. Okay? But he went through Egypt to get it. That's the ancient Egypt, the Egypt that I respect. Not what this brother represents. Because this brother, I bet you he ain't even trying to go to Egypt get, to get citizenship. I bet you he ain't even in the process. He just running his mouth on the bake talk for you. This is like these other brothers. Now, there are some Kemite brothers that actually do, and some of these brothers I do respect, they actually do go to Egypt. There are some of y'all brothers out there that do. Now, I have respect for those brothers. I'm not saying they got Egyptian citizenship. But they do have some type of African connection, okay? And most of those brothers know several different languages. But this brother, I can already tell. This, by what he's saying out of his mouth, using words like esoteric. That's the white man's word, esoteric. That's a white man's word, okay? Uh, the point is you have no evidence to support your position, okay? The evidence that we're supposed to use is the scripture, the Torah or the rest of the Bible, okay? You have not used that because you know that's self-destructive for you to use this Bible. And I don't want you to explain the Bible. I've been reading it for 30 years. I don't need you to explain it to me. All I need to do is read your opinion that's written and published explicitly, exactly like you said, I want to be see it in the Bible. And if I can't see it, I'm sorry, I'm going to call you a liar, Okay? Sorry, I'm old school. If I don't see it written, hey, to me, it ain't law. You know, that's why you got what they call loopholes in the law. You know what loopholes in the law are? Things that are not written. 
the, the police officer can only hold you accountable for what's written. He can't hold you accountable for what's not written. He can't hold you accountable for what what the law means esoterically or what you try to say it means. If he say you're going to drive 65 miles per hour, you drive 90 miles per hour, he can get you a ticket. That's clearly written. Okay? So that's what this brother struggles with, what's written. Okay? This brother, don't, they only can hold you accountable for what's written. They can't hold you accountable for what's not written. Okay? So anyway, uh, this is a biblical discussion about in the audience. This is not a what this brother think it, the Bible says. No, he didn't find it in the Bible. I've already shown his brother that Egypt is not painted negatively in the scriptures. Why? Because Abraham, the first nation that he went to, was Egypt, and we know Egypt was well established. Everybody knows that. So you talking about everybody knows something? Everybody knows Egypt was already well established. I showed it in the Torah. I read that in the Torah that Egypt was a wealthy and established nation. I showed you that. Okay. So why are you stealing what I'm saying? Stop using my stuff, okay? I showed you in the Torah that Egypt was a wealthy and established nation. The promise made to Abraham, Abraham become a great nation, was based on the premise that Egypt was already a great nation. Because if I promise you that you're going to be a great person, I have you have to be able to know what a great person looks like. That picture is a picture of a great person. That great nation is Egypt. That's the picture. Not saying Israel will become Egypt. Because there has not been not one pharaoh in Israel. So, no, we're not going to make the same exact blueprint of Egypt. No. But you, Abraham needed a, uh, a reference to what a great nation was, and that was Egypt. Okay? That's the point. All right? And I already, already – so that's in a positive light. Again, this brother has not used uh, any scripture. Okay, at all. Only thing he says is that I'm reading scriptures that everybody know. However, this brother don't know because if he knew what this debate was about, he'd be reading scriptures. Okay, but he has not done so uh, thus far. Now he has some questions about where white people came from, where the Israelites came from. Um, the Israelites came from Shem, as in Genesis chapter ten, um, verse um, twenty-one. It talks about that. But notice, in my favorite book of the Bible is Genesis, but notice how Brother Mercy keeps quoting Scripture, which is what I told his brother was about since the beginning. Now, I would rather debate somebody a little bit more qualified than this brother because what this brother is saying is, is not what's, what's established by the Kemite community, what I've heard more better debaters. Yeah, and if he knew anything about Hebrew, he would be bragging about the Hebrew language because he would understand the Hebrew language died out. And, they, and like I told you, only a few people spoke the Hebrew language. As a matter of fact, the more educated people that came out of the community don't even recognize Hebrew as a language. So why are you studying Hebrew? All right? So, see, people who really know languages know that Hebrew is not really a recognized language. <laughs> so... You know, you study Hebrew, it's like a, well, I ain't going to get his brother too much because it's too early. But, see, this brother don't, that's why I say you're just a parakeet, man. You're just repeating what other people say. You don't really know any other language. So if you knew language, you would know you wouldn't even study Hebrew because you would understand that Hebrew don't take you nowhere. Okay? All right? Because it really is a, uh, what they call it, a language is without, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But. people once again the frauds of Kemen and Israelites number six four six seven one six seven three two zero I see you have more and more people joining in. Uh this is the second rebuttal part of this debate. Let's go to Amen two ten. Go ahead. All right, so this brother he says well he's not an Israelite but he acts just like an Israelite. See the thing is like somebody told me once they said when a brother's knowledge runs out he resorts to personal tax. That's all this guy is doing. He's like, do I have a passport to go to Egypt? Go to Egypt for what? I am Egypt. I'm black. I can represent any culture in Africa. I can represent Nigeria, 
the Hausa, the Fulani, the Oromo, those are all just cultures. It's not important. Egypt as a culture is not important. That's what this brother doesn't understand. I say that African Americans are Egyptian because I'm talking about the blood, like their cousin. That's why I said Egypt is on the east side of Africa. Blacks were taken as slaves from the west side of Africa. That don't mean that they're not related. They're still cousins. So it don't, the culture don't matter. Am I culturally an, an Egyptian? A little bit. You know, I didn't live in Egypt, so, you know, I can't say I'm fully 100% that culture, but can I rep that culture? Of course I can, because it's, it's an African culture. I can represent Zulu culture. You know, just like uh, Floyd Mayweather took a trip to uh, South Africa to promote uh, boxing over there in Kwa Natal in South Africa. And he actually did some type of Zulu dance, and he blended right in. I mean, if you didn't know who Floyd Mayweather was, you wouldn't know whether he was Zulu or not. He looked just like everybody else that was uh, in South Africa. You know, and I, I got brothers on my Facebook all the time. They post pictures next to Africans. We might be a little bit lighter because we got a little bit of, you know, slave genetics from being raped. But you really can't tell the difference. The same when an African migrates here. There's a bunch of Africans walking around. You can't tell who, who is African and who's African-American once they've been assimilated into uh, American culture. You know, so the brother keeps saying, well, you, 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 don't, pro, you don't quote Bible um, passages. The thing is, man, I, what I'm doing is I'm giving you the esoteric wisdom that's hidden in the Bible. I'm not even using the Egyptian text. I, did, the brother, I asked the brother, I said, see, he, he skipped over this part. I said, where are the bodies of Abraham? Where are the bodies of Moses? Where is the bodies of Yeshua? So you got all these bodies of these deceased uh, ancestors, you know, these Kemites. You got Tutankhamun, you know what I'm saying? You got Ramses, you got Pharaoh Seti. You know, you got all these bodies of all these people. And, the, the, you know, the, the people that supposedly read the Torah are supposed to be the children of God. And their powerful, you know, Yahweh or Yahweh or whatever you want to call them, couldn't make one tomb for not one of his prophets. And these supposed to be a, pe- a special people. Obviously, they're not that special. Because God said, it, these bunch of criminals ain't even worth making a tomb for. But in reality, he didn't do that because they never existed. That was the c- clever scribes that sat there and plagiarized these ancient Egyptian texts and created these characters based off of ancient Egyptians. That's why if you type in any biblical character, no, not one tomb pops up, not one mummy or dead body pops up, a cartoon pops up, a painting, a drawing with a pen and ink and color. You know, the Torah got a copyright. You know, it's, it, it comes off a printing press. These people are trying to sell their culture to people, and gullible blacks bought it hook, line, and sinker. So he's like, I want you to read out the read out the Bible for what? I'm not no slave. <laughs> That's what he don't understand. See, he's trying to subtly push the Bible on us and be like, well, this debate is about, you know, us reading scripture. No, it ain't. The the topic is called the frauds of Kemet and the frauds of Israel. It ain't called uh, go blow for blow for verses. I just agreed to go blow for blow for verses because I feel that my biblical knowledge is superior to his because I understand esoteric wisdom and etymology. And because he has no esoteric wisdom whatsoever, he tries to demonize what he don't understand and say, well, esoteric wisdom, that's, that's from white people. No, it ain't. That's from, that's from, you know, anybody can use esoteric wisdom. He don't even know what esoteric wisdom means. Etymology means finding uh, the root meaning of words, and esoteric knowledge just means uh, the inner uh, knowledge. You know, why do you think people create a donut? See, because the outside of the donut represents what's called the exo, E-X-O, exo exterior of the donut. That's why you have an exoskeleton, which is the outside of the skeleton. And then the inside knowledge, the people who are like the cult members, like the Masons who have the inside knowledge, they're called the esoteric people. And those people have what's called inner standing because they're in the inner circle. And then the people like Mercy, they're the exoteric people. See, they're on the outside like the Christian. And they take everything literally. They don't understand anything. 
this brother talked on for 10 minutes, uh, you know, bashing me, but he didn't teach you nothing. He didn't even, he, he was so obsessed with bashing me, he couldn't just ignore that and just go scripture by scripture. See, if he went scripture by scripture and ignored attacking, uh, and, and ignored attacking me, we might have all learned something. But we learned absolutely nothing when this brother talked. And, you know, that's a part of the debate, too, is that so we can use our knowledge and teach. And like I said, the knowledge of Kemet is vastly superior to the people that plagiarized Kemet, which is these, these slaves that go by the Torah. That's what they are, the slaves. They have exoteric knowledge. You don't have no uh, inner understanding. That's why he wants to demonize understanding and say, well, that's crazy. That's, that's white man stuff. You, know, uh, you don't speak any other. What does that matter? It don't mean nothing. At the end of the day, you still up under a slave religion, not me. You know, he got the nerve to sit up there and say, I use a white man term. You read not a white man book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then trying to force everybody else to go by this white man book. I ain't going for it. I'm not going to read out that book. I'm, I'll study the book. And I don't, you know, I don't even hate the Torah, to be honest with you. I'm not anti-Torah. What I am is I try and defend elements that are out there that attack the spirituality of black people. And I know that, you know, the Jews that finance these slave ships, uh, they went by the Torah. You know, and it's the same with the Christians. So I'm really just attacking people that use the Torah for racism because the Torah itself is racist. And these brothers are so brainwashed that they pick up the same book that their masters give them and do the same thing and use it for racism against their own people. He ain't never picked up that uh, Torah and used that to attack the people that enslaved his people. He just turns around and attacks his own people because that's what the book was meant to do. See, he doesn't understand that there are more advanced books beyond the Torah. He don't read the Sephiroth. He don't read the Zohar. He doesn't read any ancient Israelite writings. He just stuck in the Torah. And I read all these ancient writings. I study the Kabbalah, and I, I'm studying Hebrew. I'm not a master at it, but I'm far more advanced than he is. That's why he didn't know that the first two letters in the name of Abraham was Abba, which means father, because he's the first seed of the, of the house of Israel or whatever, or whatever, whatever he, he's trash. He don't exist. You know what I'm saying? So he's the bad. Once again, it's a debate talk for you. So we're going to go to the third rebuttal part of this debate. We're going back to Brother Mercy. But you got eight minutes. Go ahead. Uh, wow. Again, this brother said I'm personally attacking him because I asked him, does he have an Egyptian passport? Wow. That's a personal attack. Mm. Wow. So you don't have to go to Egypt. You don't have to travel to Egypt, but you can call yourself an Egyptian. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Now, now I know you don't represent the Kemah community. I, I need somebody a little bit more qualified to debate me because I've heard better arguments. Uh, so I've heard people that actually went over to Egypt and went to the Egyptian pyramids. I, I think I have a better chance. That person has a better chance to debate. Now, I said they will win. They have a better chance because a person who has filled what they call Field knowledge, okay, field knowledge, that's knowledge in addition to book knowledge. Only thing this book brother has mentioned was a bunch of Google stuff he done on Google and some probably some books he read by other authors. But see, that's not real, real wisdom, brother. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is going to the place that you claim to be from going there to see if you're really from there. That's common sense. I'm not giving you stuff that's hard to understand. And then I ask you what's written on your driving license. Is Egyptian or Kemite written on your driving license? I ask you that because you know why I ask you that? Because the Kemite community actually had a debate about that. Because <laughs> I used to actually listen to some Kemite people who are a little bit more intelligent than you are. Um, I don't want to offend you, but they're a little bit more telling you are. Um, 
they actually had debate because they ran into that little problem where they said, well, dang, can we really claim the Kemite identity if we ain't got no government identification to prove that we're Kemites? This is what the upper echelon Kemite people have said in their argument. This is what your community has said. Okay? This is not a personal attack. This is what your community has said. They need that. That's what the Moors, this is why the Moors came, which you look down on. That's why they try to come up with some type of government identification, and they all try to unify. Well, anyway, I ain't got to talk about that because this is a scriptural debate. But the point is, brother, this is the argument going on in your own community. Okay? So you, you probably need some government identity, some type of proof to prove to say who you are, man, because you got this for a nation. Aren't you trying to become a nation, or are you just trying to stay a bunch of group people walking around preaching on the streets? Or are you really trying to run something? Who are you? Okay? I know Egypt. They're a nation. And you have to have a visa to get there. All right, now, let's go back to the uh, – oh, yeah, this brother says he studies Hebrew. Well, that's good, brother. But the, the upper escalon people of your community have already denounced Hebrew – as not a, uh, a, a a language that's recognized national or internationally because its roots are not um uh, uh it's not connected to other languages so this hebrew that you're speaking that you're studying that you critique me and judge me on it might not even be hebrew is what you don't even understand okay this is what you don't even understand you know so this is the thing, you know, this is what you, uh, you guys do. But anyway, I'll just say that because this is a scriptural debate because we agree. Because I asked you plainly in front of child, I said, are you going to use the Bible to prove uh, what your position? And you agreed to use the Bible and you're not using the Bible. Okay. You're not using that. All right. Now, uh, I wanted to say that uh, again. But see, you've made some very dumb arguments, and I'm trying to figure out, you don't have to go to Egypt to consider yourself an Egyptian? You don't have to, oh, I can claim Nigerian. I could be a Nigerian if I want to. Oh, I could be because we all cousins. That's the most idiotic argument I ever heard. Do you realize they speak different languages? You said there's, different, there's many different dialects in Africa. I mean, so you, you – brother <laughs> – you can't be Nigerian and Egyptian, okay? Neither Nigerian or Egyptian, okay? All right? I mean, this brother is just the most, oh, I don't even know what to say about this dude. Oh, I could be Nigerian Monday. I could be Egyptian Tuesday. I could be Zimbabwe Wednesday, right? According to you. Because we're all cousins, right? No, bro. they all different nations. they all different nations. And you need to find out which one you belong to, not one, which one you think you belong to. Because every nation got their own rules, okay? And in some of the, in many of these nations, they speak different languages within the nation and different dialects within the nation. So if you want to communicate with your Egyptian brothers, you might want to actually go over there and meet them, okay, and see if they recognize you, okay? All right? And see, okay, okay, and let's find out if you really are Egyptian, all right? But anyway, moving forward. Uh, the Bible's not a slave uh, book. The Bible's actually a freedom book. It's a freedom. That's why if you look at it, African-American history, you'll find out that the slaves killed because we had a Bible in our hands and we were trying to read the Bible. If you understand your own history in this nation, you would understand that. They didn't want us reading the Bible. They made it against the law for us to have religion. Slaves don't have religion. It's against the law to have religion. If you read through the scriptures, you will see that. If you read through American history, you will see that. You know, they didn't want us reading the scriptures. Okay. Now, the Egyptians are actually not paying to be a bad light. Yahweh just told Pharaoh to let uh, his people go. That, that's all that was. The Pharaoh didn't want to let them go. So that's why the Pharaoh got in trouble. But the Most High never really had a problem with Egypt. Never really had a problem with Egypt. Okay? Now, you might read some stories later on. I'm talking about in Genesis and Exodus. But you might read some stories later on about some things. But I'm just talking about Genesis and Exodus. I'm actually reading scriptures out of the Bible and talking about them. And I'm not giving you some philosophical debate. I'm giving you what's actually written, okay? Uh, and, 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 and you will see that. And it says in chapter 11, verse 10, 
This is genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Asphat two years later after the flood. And he begot Asphat, Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. Okay? And we see here Shem. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, something else I wanted to mention. Oh, I don't know why I mentioned this earlier. Uh, a lot of your prophets uh, came through the line of Abel. If you know the story of Cain and Abel, and they descended from Noah. Okay, because I know you had the argument before when we had the conference call. You didn't understand. See, this is what you had a question about genealogy. You ain't know where white people came from. That was your question. You ain't know where white people came from according to scriptures. That's how I know you don't read the scriptures. Because the questions you asked, you didn't even know where white people came from. Okay? you. Now I'm talking about white people, where they came from according to the scriptures. Because that's what this is about. Scriptures. So you didn't know that. Okay, so that's why I'm going through this genealogy, because you don't know where people came from. Okay, so that's how I know you don't really study Torah. Just like I know that you don't have to go to Egypt to be an Egyptian. Just like you don't have to be to read Torah to be a Torah expert, like according to you, right? Because it's all esoteric, right? I don't have to read the Torah to be a Torah. I can I, I know a lot about Torah without even reading it. That's your argument. No, that's not how it works. You have to go to Egypt. If you want to be an Egyptian, you might want to gain some citizenship so that way you can show and become a diplomat. See, if you become an Egyptian diplomat, you might be absolved from some of the American laws over here. See, that's something the Moors discovered. But see, that's another debate. See, if you actually listen to some of your cousins, the Moors, because they're all Africans according to you, okay, if you actually listen to them, you might be able to get some legal um, reprieve. But that's another discussion. But of course, we all just Egyptians, according to you, or Kemites. Kemite is only one nation. Yeah, I apologize that uh, two minute button wasn't working for a minute. I don't know, some technical difficulties, and I was trying to press the number. It actually went over um, eight minutes, went like to nine minutes. So I have to give nine minutes to Amin Su 10 right now. And by the way, people, uh, it's 10 minutes on the air, people. We have 10 minutes on the air. What that means is if you want to um, listen to the rest of the show, you have to call in via phone or via Skype. I got the number, 646-716-7320. If you're on social media, you got to call in the rest of the show before the time runs out. There's only 10 minutes left, and we're going to have the overtime part of the show. Uh, due to the late, you know, late start, that's why we have to go to the overtime part of the show. So we appreciate you guys, though, for uh, tuning in to the Big Toffee Radio. So let's go to Amen 210. Go ahead. All right, so once again, uh, the brother, he, he talked about the Bible a little bit, but he's trapped. He did the same exact thing all over again that I told you guys that he was going to do. He went on and on about me and traveling to Egypt. See, this is what this, see, the thing is, that, let me tell you the fundamental difference between me and mercy. I think like a king. So when I say I can adopt Nigerian culture or the Maasai tribe, or the Oromo tribe, or I can be Egyptian one day and Zulu the next, is because to me, I see Africa as one continent. See, so the the Romans came in and carved up Africa and then named it after their general Africanus Leo Scipio. And I don't, I don't, um, what do you call that? I don't, I don't acknowledge that. That's invisible to me. So these people that are living in Egypt, to me, they just got a momentary, momentary, victory and they're occupying that land i don't have to go to them for citizenship they they're in my land that's a part of africa they got to come to me for their citizenship and if i had more power they would be out of there it, you know if i had the power of the pharaoh there wouldn't be no arabs in egypt there wouldn't really be no non-black people on that african continent including black people that subscribe to the torah so that's how a, a king thinks see he don't think like a king He's like, well, you got to do this and do that and, you know, play all these games. Those, those are all Western European games that I don't subscribe to. I don't subscribe to none of my con former conquerors or present conquerors' ideologies at all. I subscribe to a powerful uh, pro-black um, philosophy, you know. And he said something like, well, the white man, he, he denied blacks from reading the Bible. That's not true. He doesn't even know American history. Um, the Bible was one of the few books that the uh, white man allowed the slaves to read. 
at first he didn't want them reading literature, mathematics, and science. That's what he blocked us from. But he allowed us, he taught some of us, he let some of us learn English so that we could read those Bibles because he knew that we would trap ourselves in those Bibles because that's what they're built for. They're spiritual traps. You know, all the members are cult members, and they don't understand that that religion is really pagan, not pagan in an uh, anti-Abrahamic uh, sense, but it's pagan in an anti-Egyptian sense. How are you going to look at Egypt and say Egypt's pagan when Egypt is thousands of years older than the Abrahamic faith? So you're the pagan, you know, to the people that study Kim, you know, the, the Kemet uh, religion. You know, if you look at the word religion itself, it means legions against Ray or legions of the sun god Ray. Ray is hidden in the word religion. So, like I said, this brother's saying something like, well, you know, you need to go to Egypt to authenticate yourself. He keeps focusing on culture. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about blood and that all black people are related by blood. I can go to Haiti and be a Haitian. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with Haitian culture, but I can identify with those people as my brothers and sisters by blood. I can hop off Haiti and go to Jamaica and blend in with the Jamaicans because I'm related to them by blood. Now, they have a, a Rasta culture. You know, the Rasta means the Egyptian god Ra and Star, the Ra, Star, Far, I. I'm not a Rasta. That's culture. But we can ignore the culture and sit down and smoke a doobie as brothers and sisters, whoever, whoever else wants to join us. And we can have laid back conversation. And I can get up off of Jamaica and take a trip to Honduras and hang out with the brothers there. I can go anywhere around the planet and bond with black people as brothers and sisters. I can go to Cuba. It doesn't matter. That's what this brother doesn't understand. He's fixating on like, well, this is Egyptian culture and you're, you're not Egyptian. And then not only that, he takes it to another level of ignorance. And for some reason, he thinks that the uh, modern Egyptians in 2016 are like the Egyptians of ancient times. These people have only been in Egypt maybe less than a thousand years you know if you like he says like i love to love to use google you need to learn to love to use google too and google egypt and you'll find out it says that these people came into egypt so they're not the original egyptians egyptian is a greek word that the greeks use to define this new group of people that has settled in that land you know and then obviously the bible calls them mitzrayim but you got to remember these are the invaders and the conquerors trying to give black people, they're trying to name black people, just like Africanus Scipio uh, Leo named the continent of Africa and its people and inhabitants after himself. But does that mean that you're actually an African? No, that's just what an outside person uh, calls you. You know what I'm saying? Just like if you look at any other language, like in Hebrew, black means Shakur. See, so in English, black means black, you know, but as everyone walking around a Shakur, no, it's, that's the outside person's how they're trying to define a certain color or a certain group of people, and that's their opinion. But that doesn't mean that that's what it is. You got a Queen Lake Victoria in Africa. Does that mean it really belongs to Queen Victoria? No, that's what an outside person is calling that lake. But if I get there, you better believe I'm going to talk with the local inhabitants and find out what they call that lake, and that's what its name's going to be. I'm not going to acknowledge no Queen Victoria. Then this brother was like, well, how could you be a, uh, an Egyptian if you live in America? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't understand what he's trying to say. Look, if you have a person in China, right, and a Chinese person comes to the United States, aren't they still Chinese? You know? They're still Chinese. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he, don't speak, if he speaks English or not. Uh, a Chinese guy that lives in Greenland is still Chinese. So, you know, Kemet is just a culture, but we are all Egyptians. And see, the the Western powers spend billions of dollars to, like they made gods of Egypt. They didn't depict any of the characters of black, but they let you be a Hebrew and all these other fake identities because they know that the real essence of black power is Egypt. They don't want you to be an Egyptian. They want you to be anything but that. See what I'm saying? And this brother uh, actually feeds into and subscribes to that, you know, his master's ideology. I don't subscribe to his master's ideology. That's why he doesn't really saying, well, I don't want to debate him. 
because I don't bow down to him. See, because I believe that Kemet is superior. He needs to bow down to Kemet and all the other people that follow the Abrahamic religions, because in ancient times, they did bow down to uh, Kemet. You know, it's just they gained power through violence in Africa, and now they, they done got the West African insubordination, and he's trying to bow down to his master, and he's trying to get me to bow down to his, you know, Jewish masters too, and I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it because I'm not a weakling. You know, so he has to understand the reason why I study Hebrew is because Hebrew comes from the Egyptian. You you talk about Google it, Google, Google it. If you type in Google, if you type in Hebrew in Google, it'll say child system. And then parent system, it'll say Egyptian hieroglyphs. And then how do you prove that Hebrew comes from the Egyptian hieroglyphs? Well, the first two letters of the Hebrew is what? The Aleph and the Bet, which is the English A and the B, which is the Greek Alpha and the Beta, which is the Arabic Aleph and the Bet, right? And the A comes from the paleopictograph, which is an hieroglyph of an ox head. The letter A is an upside down ox head. So the Aleph is the Egyptian apis bull of Egypt. Then the second letter is B, Beth, Bethlehem, which means house. You know, or they say that God is named El, which is the Aleph and the Lamed, right? Which is the ox head of the bull and the penis of the bull is the Lamed. If you study any Hebrew, you will know that the Lamed is the bull's penis. That's why an obelisk is the bull penis of the bull god Osiris that's erected. Now, why would the Egyptians erect a giant penis? Because like I said, remember the moon controls your menstrual and the sun controls your erections. So the obelisk or the Tekken or the minaret We have like one minute and 16 minutes on the air, one minute, 16 minutes on the air. If you want to hear the rest of the show live, you have to call in via phone or via Skype. Dial that number, 646-716-7320. And remember, the public Q&A is still, you know, coming soon. We're going to hear from the people that call in. We're going to hear from you guys out there in social media land, but you're going to have to call in via phone or via Skype. We're going to hear what you guys got to say about this debate. So make sure you call in before the time runs out. Uh, right now it's 50 seconds before the time runs out. Again, you know that number, 646-716-7320. If not, check out the archives, check out iTunes, and you can check out the show later on. And I appreciate everybody that tuned in. To debate Talk Radio. So now we're going into the cross examination part of this debate, and each person has to pay a question to ask one another. We're going to start off with Brother Mercy asking questions to Amen Su Ten, and uh, Amen Su Ten, your job right now is just to answer the questions that he, uh, you know, put out there, not to you know question him. That's the capability, and then when it's your turn, you're going to ask him questions, and you know, vice versa. So we're going to start off with uh, Brother Mercy asking questions to Amen Su Ten. You can go ahead with your question, brother. Okay, um, according to the Bible, because um, you said you studied Torah, um, where did Egypt come from? You asking me a, this question? Because you said you studied Torah. So, so you're, you you're, you, know you asked no, no, hold on. I'm asking you a question. You said you know Torah, and you know it better than me. So... Where did, uh, according to the Bible, according to the Torah, where did Egypt come from? So your your question is, according to the Bible, where did Egypt come from? That's right. Um, let me see how I'm going to answer this. I need chapter and verse. There is no chapter or verse in the Bible that supports where Egypt comes from, and I'm going to tell you why. Because in the Bible you read, it says that Noah begat him, Shem, and uh, Japheth. But that doesn't mean because the Bible says that that's where Kemet comes from, that that is indeed where Kemet comes from. See, what this brother doesn't understand is that this book, the world is made up of millions of different books. And see that there's no corroborating book. Corroborating means that there's no identical source outside of the Bible to corroborate this uh, false theory that Ham is. Could I move uh, on to the next question, Sal? Please not answering my question. 
I actually recorded to the back. Hold on, 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 hold he has a minute. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and see, All the right. thing is, like, you can't expect someone to answer a question in the manner that you want because you don't have power and control. That's what you don't understand. I'm not a slave, so I'm not going to answer it in the way that you're speaking. You want me to say, like, no one ham and stuff like that because it's in the Bible. I'm, a t- I'm telling you that there are books outside of the Bible that don't corroborate what you're talking about. So according to the Bible, right, uh, is it ham? Yes. Yeah. But uh, outside of yeah, the Bible, let's, let's, yeah, let's, no. go, let's, let's go on with the cross examination. Let's go on. Yeah, kind of go to the next question. Let's go on with it. Come on. Let's go. Next question. Okay, he didn't answer my question according to the Bible. Okay, now I didn't ask you what reality, what you think. I asked you according to the Bible because you said you knew the Torah. That's the thing. You said you read the Torah. You knew the Torah better than me. If I asked you a question according to this book, what this book say? I'm not asking you whether or not you agree with this book. I'm asking you what according to this book. What this says. I'm not asking you whether or not you agree with it, whether you think it's true or not. Because you said you knew it better than me. So I'm just trying to understand how you knew it better than me when you can't even answer a simple question. Well, anyway, again, another question. My next question is this is you, you answered the first question incorrectly according to Torah. Again, where did the Hebrew language, uh, where did the Hebrew, where did, where did the Hebrew uh, language, uh, oh yeah, something else I want to say. This brother said it came from Egypt. It didn't come from Egypt, it came from Canaanite. But anyway, we, we, we'll talk about that later. Uh, my next question, do yes or no, will be just fine. I don't need an explanation. Do you own the Egyptian passport? He has a minute, though. He still has a minute, so no. I'm going to use that minute. That's nothing. Less than three <laughs> seconds. No. Okay. Uh, uh, third, next question. Uh, next question is, do you have – Anybody in your immediate family, one of my immediate family, I don't mean esoterically, I mean in, from your immediate family that you know of, or you just, okay, you, you claim yourself Egyptian, but do you know anyone yourself or your immediate family that owns government identification that supports them being Egyptian? Yes or no? No explanation. No. Okay. Now, next question. Um. I know that uh, what you you think, you know, that's cool. But did you agree before we started this debate that you was going to use the Bible to disprove my position? Yes or no? I get a minute to answer. See, this brother is cheating. He'll say one minute uh, we're supposed to use the Bible, and then he'll ask me if I have an Egyptian uh, passport. Asking me if I have an Egyptian passport is not in the Torah according to what I've read. So he's basically, you know, whatever he feels like doing – he can do it, and then if I try and do something, oh, it's a white man, this or there, that's he's playing games. So, you know, do I? Is any of my family related to these modern Egyptians? No, I already told you that. These people that were are in modern Egypt, listen, are not the ancient Kemetic people, and black people are those ancient Kemetic people by blood, not by culture. Okay, so we're not Zulu or Nigerian, but we are related to those people by blood. That's not difficult to understand. Next question. Okay, next question. I have friends who are from Nigeria who speak the language in Nigeria, and they do not consider themselves Egyptian. So how do you answer that question? I have also friends that are from Nigeria, too, and one of those languages that they speak is called the Igbo language. Nigeria is split up into two halves. One is called uh, Cross River, and, which is Muslim, and then they got a, a bottom half, which is Christian. So I'm familiar with uh, Nigeria. Uh, do they consider themselves to be uh, Egyptians? They consider themselves to be Christians and Muslims because they're under Christian and Islamic domination. They haven't been taught about Egypt. But are they related to the ancient Egyptians? Of course they are, because Africans migrated out of the interior of Africa and settled in the eastern portion of Africa. And they took that knowledge with them. So, yes, they are uh, Egyptians by blood. Even the white man knows that. So, well, my question was, do they consider themselves Egyptian? I asked you what you thought. Like I said, listen, it's not that they can consider themselves Egyptians. They don't know about it. See, a per- when a person's ignorant, that means they're not aware, consciously aware of something. See, so if you, if you presented Egypt to them, they could make correlations and say, hey, we got this thing called, a, um, you know, these headrests. You know, if you look it up on, on Google, 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 
they got these headrests that all Africans use all over the continent, including Nigerians, that they rest their heads on during the hot summer months. And you will see that same headrest used by the Egyptian god Shu, which is the god of the wind. It's the same exact headrest. This is thousands of miles away from Egypt. All over the continent, they use the same headrest. Why would they use the same headrest? Because it's the same people. It's the same with the lion skin and the leopard skin and the craft of the uh, the leopard. You know, the leopard, the people who are these, um, what, do you, what do you call that, like leopard um, priests or whatever, the same leopard skin that was worn in Kenya is the Next question. Okay. I would say this. This brother didn't answer my question again. I asked, to, I asked this brother, what do the Nigerians, do they consider themselves Egyptians? He didn't answer my question. He danced all the way around it. So to answer that question, I'm going to answer the question. I think the answer to that question is no, because they don't consider themselves Egyptians. And they live right over there by Egypt, and they still don't consider themselves Egyptians. But people who live millions of miles away, not millions, it's not millions, I'm exaggerating, thousands of miles away from the continent of Africa, they they know more about Africans than the Africans that live in Africa. That's the most asinine statement I've ever heard in my life. These are Africans that live in Africa who have African past. So now we're going to go to... Uh um, I'm in Sue 10 is going to ask questions to Brother Mercy, and after that, we're going to take a five minute. We're going to make it five minutes now. We're going to be, uh, you know, take an extra time during the beginning part of the show, five minute intermission break, and then we're going to go to the people out there, the QA segment of the show. Uh, be that, this is the QA uh, part of the show uh, coming up real soon. You, uh, people already called in, so all you got to do is press number one. Once you press number one, we'll bring you in a conversation and hear some of your questions and uh, some of the comments that you want to make. But uh, again, we're going to take a five minute intermission break, and then we're going to go to your questions later on. But let's go to I'm in to attend to ask questions now to Brother Mercy. Go ahead. All right, Brother. Yeah, I, I, I respect your stance. I'm, I'm going to just clear up this just a fraction of a second. This is going to be intertwined with my question. So, yes, I can live in America and know more about, a, about Africa than an African that lives in Africa because you forgot that the Nigerians have been colonized. That's why it's split up in between uh, Muslim and Christian. So, of course, they're denied their history, just like the African American is denied their history. So, my question to you, <clears throat> Mr. Torah, where is Abraham's body? Boom. Uh, Abraham's body, I believe, uh, they they do have his. I believe they do have his tomb. Um, they believe it's. Um, in a certain location. I'm not sure if that's the exact location. See, I'm going to tell you if I don't know something. They say it's in a certain location, but I'm not for certain if that's really a- – you said Abraham, right? Um, Abraham, I believe they do have his, but um, that's, that's, spec- that's speculation. Exactly. There is no Abraham's body, and that's why the brothers say he don't know because it don't exist. See, so how could he have this great patriarch, but yet he doesn't know where the, the body of Abraham is? That's a that's a big bullet hole in his philosophy that he doesn't want to admit. So anyway, on on to the uh, next question, because he he says that he's some type of an African master. Uh, is Hebrew the language or the alphabet? I should say, is it based off the ancient Canaanite script? Or does it come from the ancient hieroglyphs and why? And what's your proof? According to the Bible, I don't want to hear nothing outside of the Bible. I want you to prove that Hebrew came from the Canaanite script according to the Bible. Go go for it. Okay. Um, the Hebrew language, um, first Bible. of all, okay, hold on. The Hebrew language, first of all, it don't say Hebrew language. That's number one. They don't say he, the word Hebrew language in the Bible. So what are you asking? I'm trying to figure out what you you're asking. You know exactly what I'm asking. I, I, I'm no, a, no, I'm a, you said I can't use nothing but the Bible. So they don't say Hebrew language in the Bible. So how about we go to the Bible? Matter, Hebrew you know, it don't matter if it says Hebrew or not. I'm saying that you said that Hebrew comes from Canaanite script. And I said prove it according to the Bible. No, that you was proven according to your Google search. If you Google it, it says it came from Canaanite. 
You said it came from Egyptian nope. hieroglyphics. It Googles it comes from the Canaanites. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no, if you Google it right now, you got a computer. Everyone, anybody who's listening, you got a computer, type in Hebrew alphabet. It is not going to say parent system Canaanite script. It's going to say parent system Phoenician, and then it's going to say the parent of that parent is the Egyptian hieroglyph. That's why I told this brother, because he, don't, he doesn't study Hebrew, that the first letter is the Aleph, which is the ox head of ancient Egypt, which is the Apis bull. Why would it come from the Canaanite script? but got an Egyptian hieroglyph as its first letter. Does it make that's, any sense? He don't even know the Canaanite script. That's speculation. So, Again. It's, no, I, it's not. Look it up. If you got a computer oh, or a up. cell phone. I looked it up. And what is that question? I asked you a question. According to research, it came from the Canaanite language. No, it did. You it saying according to research. It don't come from the no, Egyptian you, hieroglyph. You making that up. Did, did, did you hear the key word this brother said? He said according to what research? See, I asked them to look it up in modern times. I said, look, type it up now and type in Hebrew alphabet. And, and if you see at the top, it'll say parent system. It don't say no Canaanite script. I know it don't because I've researched oh, that stuff. Uh, this, it is says, a, this, this is the next question. question. Next question, brother. Next question. The next, next question. question the time running out. Next question. Yeah. Where is Moses' body? In the Torah, it says it wasn't found. And that's, even in, that's written in the Torah. It says that. So that's not hidden. From nobody, it says that in Torah that it wasn't found. All right, he he don't exist either. <laughs> it says it tells you in Torah. He, he it tells you in Torah. Let me ask, let me ask you. Let me ask my next so question. He don't exist either. <laughs> <laughs> He's speculation too. Did Moses part trillions of gallons of water to let Israelites walk through the Red Sea? I'm yes not or no. sure how much water is in the Red Sea. Yes, yes but or I no. Mean, I'm answering your question. You said millions oh, yeah, he of gallons a of water. Yeah, he has a minute, too. He has a minute. He has a minute. I'm you said millions. I don't know if you're exaggerating or not. You know, you might be exaggerating. If, you, if you're if asking me, did he part the Red Sea, I would say yes. But if you ask me, was it millions of gallons of water, I'm not sure how many gallons of water is in the Red Sea. So I'd say part the Red Sea, yes. To answer that question, if you if you if you're just being sarcastic with the millions of gallons, my answer to that question is yes. All right, so that proves that this brother don't have no esoteric wisdom whatsoever. He's a fundamentalist Christian. He takes these stories that are written in the Bible, literally. Ain't no man wave no staff around and part no millions of gallons of water. That's crazy. So the thing is, like, when your philosophy, you know, when you got one thing crazy, there might be other things crazy, too. Just like his, none of them characters don't exist. But anyway, on to the next question. Did Jesus or Yeshua die and was Come back to life resurrected. Uh, you got a you minute to answer. But the mercy, hold on, let me see. This is actually his call actually dropped. Wow. His call dropped. And what that means is we know over time part of the show, unless he knows somebody on the line, he's not able to call back in. That's crazy. Wow. Oh man. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna have well, to can the, the can the guest call in? Uh yeah yeah say it again okay. the guest can call in and do question and answer too if I mean because there's probably people that support him they can call in and defend him or there might be Kimites yeah, yeah. I, I can roll we're with either go one to, yeah we're gonna go to the Q and A segment of the show me and that brother Murray I apologize you know the brother called what's been the overtime part of the show he can't call back in he's just blog talk radio you know I don't know why they set it up like that but that's what it is so you know we apologize to people out there. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to the Q&A segment. Or oh, you want to take a little break, brother? You want to take a five-minute break, or you want to go straight to the people? I'm going to go straight to the people. All right, so let's do it then. Let's go straight to the people out there. Again, if you have any questions or comments, you know that number, or just press number one if you're listening on the phone, or Skype, press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Again, we apologize for the technical issue, you know, for the mercy, you know. We apologize for that. But let's go to the calls. Let's go to 443 You're live in there. Hey, what's up, fellas? How y'all doing? This is Jeff calling out of Maryland. Can y'all hear me? What's going on, Jeff? What's up, brother doing, Jeff? Hey, how you doing? Um, hey, brother, no, no disrespect to you at all. Um, uh, I've you've been I've been hearing you say plagiarism all night. So my question is is simple. According to whatever scholarship you be believe in, can you show the audience tonight reading from it? 
uh, an example of plagiarism as it um, relates to the Bible? Well, the thing is, in order for someone to understand that one text is a plagiarized text uh, from another text, what's the first thing someone would have to understand? What do you think that would be? Say that again. If someone is claiming that something is plagiarized, right, one thing, what is the first thing that a person must understand to prove plagiarism? They must have both of what? For for me, they would have to show uh, plagiarism, um, that somebody is stealing it and pawning it off as their own. They would have to have what's called corresponding material. See what I'm saying? That means they like if, if someone stole a painting, right, um, and plagiarized it, you'd have to have the original painting and the painting that was stolen. See what I'm saying? Like if someone went in a museum and busted in and stole Mona Lisa and then, you know, started fabricating copies and things like that, that's plagiarism. So how do you prove plagiarism in the Bible? You would have to have read the ancient Egyptian text to prove that. So this Brother Mercy has not read the ancient Egyptian text. And if a person has not read the ancient Egyptian text, they would not recognize plagiarism in the New Testament, the Old Testament, nor would they recognize it in the Quran, the Holy Quran. See, so I read the ancient Egyptian text so I can see plagiarism in those books because I have the books. That's what I'm saying. Can you show it to the people? You say you, you read, that's what I'm asking. Uh, 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 with relation to the Bible, can you show an example of the plagiarism that you say it is? With whatever well, Moses, book, well, Moses you, said he was going to lead the Israelites to a land of milk and honey. Now I'm asking you a question. Was that literal or was that symbolic? That is that is uh, symbolic. Uh, and what is the, what's the meaning of it? But here's my thing. You didn't answer my question yet. You're trying to pump, go off to something different. You said you uh, read the I'm, text. I'm, I'm answering your question with mastery. That's what you don't I, understand. I, I, I'm giving I, you I the Egyptian. I don't know. I understand what, time, what you're one doing. One at a time. Cool. I, I understand what you're doing, but you're, but, but you're eluding the question. You said you read the text. So simply all I'm saying is reach over to your book, y'all. Get the text and read an example for the people of plagiarism without all the esoteric philosophy that has been spewed out tonight. I'm just, I'm simply just asking for an example from the text you said you read showing plagiarism as it is defined today. Well, let me, let me, let me show you an example, right? Just look at the word. What is the word uh, Genesis in Hebrew? Beginning. Huh? Beginning. No, no, no. I said in Hebrew. What's the word Genesis in Hebrew? Uh, I, I don't, I don't study the Hebrew. See, I study the Hebrew and the and the Egyptian. So that's why you can't prove to someone that plagiarism occurred if you don't read neither text. So to every everything to you is going to be speculation. You got to get into these texts, and then you will find these answers for yourself. So the word Genesis in Hebrew is the word better sheet, B-E-R-E-S-H-I-T. And mm-hmm. Ray is hidden in the middle of the word better sheet. And everyone that studies on the Internet knows that the word Genesis literally means the gene of the genealogy of the goddess Isis. That's what the word it means. All right, cool. Um, I guess I'm not going to get what I want. Again, i like for the people to see that I asked a simple question, get the book off the counter, read it for us, but it sounds like more philosophy. So, Sal, thank you for the call. You, you can move on to the next person. All right, man, we appreciate the call. Again, I don't see people pressing number one, but I see a lot of people listening to the show, though. <laughs> so if you have any questions or comments at this time, press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Uh, then now we can pretty much wrap up the show. But, we, you know, this is your time, people. This is your time to challenge the information. Once again, it's the Bay Talk uh, Radio. The show is going to be in the iTunes podcast. It's going to be on YouTube later on. 
Uh, so you can ask your questions. If you have any questions out there, this is your time. Let's go to the next person. Let's go to 601-955. Live in there. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, my uh, question is for uh, 210, I guess. That's, that's your name, brother? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I was listening to the show, and then I had to cut off what I had something else to do. But I'm trying to get to understand. Do you believe the, that the Bible that, that is against you guys? Is that what you – is that your understanding? Wait, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I said, do you believe that the Bible is uh, against Kemet is what you, you're saying? The Bible is basically the supernatural mythological aspects are basically based off of ancient Sumerian tales. And this, the Egyptians were into what's called sun and moon magic. So the sun and moon magic that's hidden in the Bible uh, is based off the Egyptian. And that's why I tried to use the example with the brother with the word Abraham. See, when you don't, un, when you don't study Hebrew and you don't study the Egyptian, it's impossible to prove something to you because you're not really versed in, in neither one of those two sciences. It's like if you were studying mathematics, right, and you were like, you know, prove that, um, you know, the Amper-Munger equation was plagiarized. Well, if you're not familiar with the Amper-Munger equation, you're not going to recognize it being plagiarized in a different source. So to answer that other brother's question, he wants me to prove plagiarism, but yet he don't read the Egyptian text. He, what he wants me to do is find like two books and, you know, go verbatim, you know, side by side. It doesn't work like that. When you read the Egyptian text and understand these words and etymological meanings, you will find those meanings hidden within the Bible. So, yes, the Bible is a Sumerian um, <clears throat> Egyptian text. And the more you learn about Egypt, the more you'll learn that the Bible is plagiarized. See, on the, on the base level the Bible is a story on the highest level. The Bible represents the human mind and consciousness. That's what the Egyptians were into. That's why the, the pyramids in Giza mirrored the human brain. Why do you think the pyramid has what's called a King's chamber and a queen's chamber? Those aren't places where a, a human body laid. They're symbolic of the human mind because you have a chamber in your mind, the King's chamber, and you have a queen's chamber. You know, and you have a burial chamber. Well, well, you know, well, I was really, I, I, ain't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I was just really just looking for a simple yay or nay from you. It, 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 can I just get a yay or nay on that question? That is a yay. The Bible is based off Sumerian and Egyptian, uh, basically, books. Yes. All right. Thank you, brother. Yep. That's all I have, so thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Is there, is there a next caller, Sal? Yeah, we got other callers. Once again, people, this is your time. You know the number, the number 646-716-7320. Let's go to the next caller. Let's go to uh, 404-484. You live on the air. Uh, hi, this is LW from Atlanta. How y'all doing tonight? We're doing great, brother. How you doing? I'm doing great, sir. I, I appreciate the information you are giving, and um, and it is just interesting to me that uh, I, I, can, I, I didn't study what you studied, but I can hear what you're saying, that we don't know the original text, so how can we compare them? And I, I appreciate the knowledge that you are giving. And my one question was for for on face value, not knowing the the real meaning that is. I always believed those rituals that we did in regular church were death rituals, like drinking the blood to remember Jesus and eating the body. Do you believe that's a harmful ritual? Oh, one hundred percent, brother. What they what they they what they took what they did is they took these rituals that were in Kemet that were positive and they made it negative. See, people don't understand that your minister comes from the Egyptian God men and it has sinister on the end of it. So he's a sinister minister. Ooh. And what the sinister minister does is he has you participate in something called communion. And you all remember the movie communion from the eighties with the demonic gray aliens. So what you do right. during communion is you all line up, 
and you walk in a and you walk in a circle. And see, in witchcraft, a, a circle is like you know you, you know how you draw the circle, and make the pentagram in the middle. You don't make the pentagram during communion, but you you act, you obviously make a magic circle, which is witchcraft. And then the pastor says what? He says eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood, which is cannibalism. See, and so when that right. when you consumed, it's called the what it's really called. It's called the supper. Christ is called the supper beast. Like, you know how you have your supper? He's called the supper beast. He's the cannibal Christ. He's the antichrist. That's why he wants you to drink his blood and drink his flesh. And then once you do that, guess what happens? You put the spirit of the antichrist within yourself. See, so the pastor right. is there to cast demons into the people that go to the church. That the people that go into the church are virgins and they, you know, their lives are messed up. Not all of them, you know, some of them do good, but there's a lot of evil that's in the church. See, because we don't know what a, a pastor is. Like, this, what on the top of the church is what's called a church steeple. That's an Egyptian obelisk. And then the church, the very word church means the circle of the whore because it comes from an ancient Scottish word meaning circe, which means circle. So the, the door of the church is in the shape of a yoni, which is a, the female opening. And then the people represent the sperm that go through the female opening. And, and of course, the man is the head of the woman. So that's why the, the pastor or the minister is also the head of the church, meaning that he's the head of the female. But his job is to cast demons into people. That's why the Christians will walk up to you. Not, they'll be like, I spoke in tongues. You know, you, you spoke in tongues. Why would a good God have people speak in an undescribable language? Because we all know that when someone gets demon-possessed, they talk in languages that we can't understand. See, a good God would have you speak in things that, you know, that you could understand. He ain't going to have you foaming at the mouth and flopping around and stuff like that. That's demonic. And, that, and people don't want to recognize that that religion is demonic. It's oppressive. Because if it was so good, then why everywhere Christians are, there's also evil. You know, the cross is a representation of death. That's why right. when, you, when someone dies... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But you know when oh, someone no, dies, yeah. But you know when someone dies, right? They put a cross over your grave, right? And why do they put a cross over your grave? Because a cross, when you tilt it sideways, is an X. An X represents death. That's why when you have the liquor bottle, it says X X X, death, death, death. You know, it has the skull and the crossbones, meaning death, meaning poison. So if the cross represents death, right? Because you died, then what are you doing wearing a cross around your neck? You re- you wearing a cross around your neck? Because you are a living dead person. You are spiritually and mentally dead. That's what it represents. See, but in, in ancient Africa or, you know, in Kemet, we wore the ankh. And see, the ankh was the thoracic uh, uh, spine of the bull, which represented male and female union. So people always jump up and down and be like, oh, those Kemites were gay. If the Kemites were gay, then why would their symbol be male and female union? That don't even make no sense. The only people that could be classified as gay. It's Christians because you y'all don't have the female in the cross. It's only the male. It's it's the it's the it's only the male symbol. It's male dominated. You know that's why I don't allow. That's why the female is missing from creation. You know it's it's patriotic, which starts with the letter P. So the the whole religion is just jacked up. You can go into Judaism. It's the same thing. It's male dominated. They cast an evil spirits. You can go into Islam. It's male dominated. They're casting evil spirit. You know, Allah is the ultimate evil spirit. People don't understand that the but the, the fallen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hmm? Yeah, that was, yeah, we gotta, you gotta let the caller respond back because you know we got more callers standing by. But okay, okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, but basically, yeah, those yeah. rituals are just, and they put spirits in people just to make the question short. I mean, the answer short. Uh, yeah, Any other questions? Uh, I pre- yeah, I just appreciate that answer because I've been thinking that all the time. And uh, I was just like a a good man asked the question: If Jesus was electrocuted, wouldn't a lot of Christians have an electric chair hanging around their neck? And and they wouldn't. A lot of people have said that, and they most definitely. Why, why would you represent something of a man being tortured and hit with rocks and stuff like that, and you wearing it around your neck? See, because it's a symbol of evil. See, because Jesus that was crucified on the cross was the Antichrist. The Jews never believed that he was the Messiah. Only Christians believed that. 
because uh, Jesus could cast demons out of people. So the Jews said, how, how are you able to do that? Is that by the power of Beelzebub or Satan that you do that? And the demons will respond to Jesus. They said, oh, that's Jesus Christ. That was their master. See, so how do you prove that both God and Jesus command demons? Because when God got mad at Saul, he threw an evil spirit in Saul. And then when he got mad at King David, he threw an evil spirit in King David. And David had to find his best heart player to remove this evil spirit. And then in Genesis 3, 1, God created the serpent, which uh, tempted Eve, but yet everybody blames Eve when it was really God. So if God is a good God, then why is God casting all these evil spirits into people? That's because the God of the Bible is, in fact, Satan. It's one and the same being. Because they say the same things. You know, it'll say uh, God ordered um, King David to number Israel. And then it'll say Satan rose up against David and ordered them to number Israel. Why would God and Satan say the same thing? Because it's the same dude. And there's another example. It says the Israelites were out with God in the, in the, in the wilderness, and God put a mark on their hands and their forehead. I just happened to re- be reading Exodus and just ran into that. And I was like, what? Because I'd only heard that in the New Testament where people get the mark of the beast on their hand and their forehead. And, and lo and right. behold, God's over there marking uh, the Israelite hand and the forehead just like the uh, devil does in, in Revelations 12 or 13. So I come to the conclusion that it must be the same dude. Not only that, is that this book was used to oppress and enslave black people, and then the people that actually worship the devil are doing really good, and they have power over us. So how can, you know, where was this God at when we were in slavery? You know, he, he sure ran into Egypt to help those Israelites, but when we was, uh, and, you know, people say, well, where are the Israelites? Well, why didn't he come on a second rec- rescue mission? He should have been like, man, they at it again. They trying to enslave, enslave my people, man. I'm going to go rescue. And he should have pulled a whole other Moses all over again and grabbed Kuta Kente and gave him special powers, you know what I'm saying, and helped him over through the Europeans and stuff like that. But he didn't. He let Kuta Kente get, get whipped and clowned, you know what I'm saying? And we ended up in slavery, and then we went, ended up under that Bible. So, like I said, that Bible is extremely dangerous. It, it, it's it's used to cast spells on people. See, people don't understand that the God of the Bible, uh, his singular name is L, and L is hidden in the uh, word spell. I, mean, I, I, mean, yeah, I, I know you got a lot of information. I mean, you got a lot of information, brother. Got, got to take some of these callers, man. <laughs> yeah, no problem, problem, brother. brother. Can I continue yeah, yeah, yeah. to listen? I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, brother. It's good right. talking to you. Good talking to you, too. Right, brother. Take care. Right. Yeah, I've been doing, I've been doing, I've been doing a lesson out here, man. Let's get some, <laughs> let's get some of these calls. I got, I got to go to the next caller. Let's go to four zero seven four eight five. You're live in the air. Good. Shabbat shalom. Sal. How you doing? Um, hey, shalom, shalom, brother. Shalom. My name is um Lamont, and I have a question. I mean, for, before we get started, let me just explain. You can probably hear the tremor in my voice. I have like essential tremors. So excuse me, but the question is, I heard you mention esoteric, and I heard you mention the Kabbalah also. Can you explain a little bit to me what exactly the Kabbalah is? I had a conversation with a Jewish person that was talking about the Kabbalah a little bit, but before I research it, can you please explain the knowledge that you have about that? The Kabbalah is very simple. See, brother, the Kabbalah is me and you. That's why if you type in the word Kabbalah, you'll sometimes see a human being pictured over the Sephiroth of the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the map of the human body. That's why the Kabbalah says you have what? Dallas, death, grace, mercy. Those are all human attributes. And so the top of the head is called Malkuth, the crown. And the, I'm sorry, the top of the head is called Keter which is the crown, you know, that's the higher consciousness. And then the lower part of the Kabbalah is called Malkuth. It's your feet where your soul is. That's why if you look at the bottom of your shoes, your, your feet are called your soul that you walk on. Cause we're all souls, you know, that has walks on the soles of our feet. So the, that's why I say esoteric means inner wisdom. Exoteric means outer wisdom. Those are for the fundamentalists like Christians who take the Bible literally like mercy who thinks that Moses parted millions of gallons of water to let a group of people, a special group of people through. That's not true. He doesn't understand the esoteric 
meaning of these uh, allegories that are in the Bible. Even Jesus says it himself. He says, I speak in parables. What is a parable? Para means two, like para, and then bull means bull. It literally means two bulls. So because if you don't if you don't research etymology, you wouldn't understand that. And then the Bible also says what? It says, I will utter dark sayings of old. That means don't take the Bible literally. And then the Bible also puts the stamp on it and says, do not be men of the letter. That means do not take what's written in the letter, which is the book, which is the Bible, literally. So the, the Kabbalah, the first two letters on Kabbalah means Ka, which means spirit, and then it means Ab Allah. So it basically means like the spirit of black people, you know, La El, you know, Kabbalah, and then Ba El is hidden in the middle of Kabbalah. So there's a lot of meaning to Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is very interesting. Um, you only going to get um, esoteric wisdom from a Jewish person about the Kabbalah. They're not going to give you any um, esoteric. They're only going to give you exoteric. They're not going to give you esoteric. Esoteric is for someone who is, you know, it's like someone trying to study physics or something like that. Because you're you're really studying the intricacies of the body. Do they do they have something to do with like magic and stuff like that? Is it? Is, do they incorporate stuff like that with it? Because she was telling me, oh, one one hundred percent magic is included, because the word magic okay. comes from the magi. You know, mm-hmm. that's where the word magic comes from. <clears throat> so you got to understand first what is magic, what magic is. You know, magic is two things. Magic is like, you know you put a dove in a hat and of course when you turn the lights out on a dove the dove goes comatose and then the magician can pull it out you know and once it hits the light it can come back to life that's one form of magic then the the next form of magic is called jewish mysticism and that's they know that the whole universe is made up of numbers Mm -hmm. so they study what's called chaldean numerology and they do things based on certain dates to gain certain types of power like if you look at the moon phases you have what's called a full moon, which is white, and then you have mm-hmm. what's called a moon of death, which is the new moon, which is black. And people will do, especially Jews, will do rituals based on these phases of the moon, the quarter moon, the half moon, the full moon, and, of course, the black moon. You'll see a lot of people uh, put out albums during the full moon, or they'll put out an album during the uh, black moon to gain that power. You know, just like Prince was killed on what? April 21st, you got to find out what moon phase that he was killed on and, and why someone would do that. See, so there's properties and principles and powers and energies that are in this universe that this universe gives off. You got to ask yourself, if the sun gives off sunlight and it feeds, you know, plants on here on Earth, then the light that's reflected off the sun that hits the moon that hits Earth, how is that affecting Earth? You know, what energy does Saturn give off that affects people? So people who study the occult know that Saturn gives off negative energy. That's why Saturday is named after the planet Saturn, which is also the Sabbath. And because the God of the Bible is the devil, he says, keep the Sabbath holy, which is the sixth day. Six planets, six, and another six gives you six, six, six. And that's why the Bible says you worship the star of your God, Remshan, which is the six-pointed star, which is the hexagram. And the first three letters and hexagram is to put what? A hex on someone, and then you have gram, because gram is short for like pentagram or pentalpha, which is the five. And that's why you have the what? The five books of Moses called the Pentateuch. You know, so the thing is, when you understand this uh, esoteric wisdom, which is understanding, then this whole story of the Bible begins to unfold to you, and it makes sense. So the Kabbalah is no different than the Holy Bible. It just represents human consciousness. And to answer your question, is there such thing as magic? Yes, it is. But magic, to me, is just a form of uh, technology. And with any technology, once you master that technology, then you can apply those sciences to the real world. Well, brother, thank you so much, man, because I have promised her I'll look into it a little bit so we can get on a better, better dialogue. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, brother. All right, man, we appreciate the calls. Once again, we still got time, people. Again, I see we have a lot of people on the phone lines listening to the show. 
we got to do a special number one, and we'll add you in. If not, we're going to pretty much wrap up the show. But once again, this is your time. Or forever hold your peace. You know, you can't say you didn't have a chance to ask your question. You know, this is your time, you know. But uh, let me see. Um, let me see if anybody else. Hold on. Let's go to uh, 404. Oh, yeah, 404 You have another question? 404 Oh, uh, yes, sir. I, uh, since nobody else was calling, I was hoping I could ask another question, but I appreciate you taking my call. Um, is the end of the prayer, amen, is that the name of Ra Amen or something else? Do you mean like when people end their prayers and they say, uh, amen, does that have anything yes. to do with the Egyptian god Amen Ra? Yes. Uh, of course it does. <laughs> and how do we know that? Because if we read in the Bible, it says what? The Bible says, these things saith the Amen, the true and faithful witness to the creation of God. So Jesus identifies himself as the Amen. And Amen can be spelled A M E N, A M I N, A M U N. And so when Amen is spelled A M U N, it's talking about the Ram. And then you got to understand that. Amen can also be spelled A-M-M-O-N, just like, you know, the tribe of Ammon in the Bible. And Ammon comes from Amen. See, which is, and you, if you type in Amen Ra, the ram's horn will pop up. You know, a guy with, a, you know, a pharaoh and he'll have a, a ram's, ram's horn like helmet on his head. That doesn't mean that a person was walking around with a ram's horn on top of their head. That ram's horn represents the hypothalamus see because the ram is what's responsible for memory and that's why when you are working with your computer you have what's called what ram memory which is the memory of the ram and if you type in the word ram what color is it it's spring green so yes amen is definitely uh used at the end of the prayers because it's, it's the praise amen ra and then who who is amen amen is the name of the the sun in ancient egypt the sun was called Aten, and the sun was also called Amun. So when you say Amun Ra, you're really just saying the sun twice. So, yeah, Amun does uh, mean the Egyptian sun deity uh, Amun Ra or Amun Ray. Yes, I suspected it, and I figured, I figured that was it. It's too coincidental that a lot of stuff that had been on Egypt to walls thousands of years before the Bible was even created, that they could just think that somebody who do not like us give us a spiritual history and we follow it, and thinking that they have our good intent in mind, which we could clearly see they still don't have the intent in mind to treat us better and think they're going to give us something that we can use that to get over our oppression. So, and, and that never made sense. So I appreciate the information. Yeah, no problem, brother. All right. Can I leave? Yeah, right, man. I I it? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, you can still listen to the show, brother. Yeah, you good. <laughs> I had to stay on the phone line. All right, once again, people, we still have a few more minutes on the air. If you have any questions or comments, press number one. We'll add you in the conversation. Like I said, you can't say you didn't have a chance to speak to the special <laughs> guests and get your, and your questions answered. However, if, there, if nobody asks some questions, we can go straight to the final statement part of the show. And I, once again, we apologize about the Mercy phone, you know, hung up. I spoke to him actually off the air. And, you know, he's unable to call in. But maybe we could do a part two or maybe we could do like a, a post-debate special and have, a, you know, a little more dialogue on this particular topic, you know, things of that nature. But we're going to try to get him back on, both the gentlemen back on, to continue where he left off at. And uh, maybe a post-debate would probably be the best for that. But um, yeah, I'll see you about those. Are people, are people allowed, allowed to ask like a second question? I can't hear you. Say it one more time. Can the can a, the same person ask a second question? Or they only get oh, like one hold question? On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Did you want? Did you want to ask another question, brother? Four oh four. Yeah, I had one. It just evaded me for a minute, but uh, it's going to... <laughs> I had a lot of uh, questions, but uh, I finally got uh, somebody who's speaking. What I've been suspecting all along, oh, and uh, and it never made sense to me that the all-knowing God from the Bible asked Abel, you know, where is thy brother? Why would he even have to ask if he's all-knowing? 
I just wanted to share that out. It's just so much see, stuff the, going on. I the, just appreciate all the info. <laughs> see, the reason why uh, all knowing God will ask where, or he, God could even be all seeing. So if He's all seeing, all knowing, all hearing, and all wise, then why would He ask where Adam was? See, because people don't understand that God represents your own consciousness. That's why in Western art, they'll depict what? They'll have the person standing there and they'll have God on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder. And they say, hey, don't follow that devil, you know, follow the angel on your shoulder. Does that mean that people are walking around with an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other? No, it represents higher and lower consciousness. And see, so your higher consciousness is located in the right hemisphere of the brain. That's why it says Jesus does what? He ascends to he ascends to the throne of God to sit on the right hand of God. See, why doesn't he sit on the left hand of God or right next to God? Why on the right side? Because the right side of the hemisphere of the brain represents higher consciousness. So when the Bible says it's looking for uh, Adam, that's talking about Adam's own consciousness, not an external being. Now, where can we find proof of that? We can find proof of that in Moses. When Moses is trying to get the Israelites to come with him out of Egypt, even though he's the bad guy. And you got to remember, the Israelites never actually wanted to leave uh, Egypt. They liked it there because Egypt was wealthy. Um, it was just Moses and Yahweh that were saying that the Egyptians were evil and that they wanted to come with them. But the Egyptians said, do not go with Moses because he's going to take you out in the wilderness and kill you. And that's exactly what Moses did. He took them out in the wilderness and killed them. So a lot of Christians will make excuses and say, well, they weren't following the commandments. Well, they didn't have, they, you don't have to follow the commandments. Like, who is this guy? That's even what Pharaoh said. He said, who is this guy that I need to follow this guy? So can we find an example of God being used as human consciousness in the story of Moses? Of course we can. So when Moses is trying to get the Israelites to come with him, what does God tell Moses to say? He said, tell them that I am, I am, which in Hebrew is Ayer, Asher, Ayer. I am that I am. Now, what does I am that I am mean? I am literally means I am that God, which you call the I am. That's talking about Moses' own consciousness. So listen to it again. Moses says, I am talking about his, himself, that God, which you call the I am, because God calls himself I am. So Moses says, I am that which you call the I am, which is Moses. That's why everywhere Moses goes, God just happens to be there because God is a representation of Moses' consciousness. That's why Moses, before he goes and kills someone, he stops and addresses his higher consciousness, which is God, which in reality is his lower consciousness, disguised as his higher consciousness. And he says, should I kill these Israelites? And God's like, kill them. And then Moses is like, well, if I kill them, you know, they'll, they'll be afraid and stuff like that, you know, so take it easy on that's He's having a debate with his own consciousness. So Adam and Eve, that's why if you look at the Bible, uh, there was only God. And then if you read in Genesis 3, 1, it says, and the serpent was the most cunning beast of the field of which the Lord God had made. See, that was the creation of lower consciousness, which is represented by the serpent. So you have God, the higher consciousness is wandering around looking for uh, Abel. And then you have the serpent, which represents lower consciousness, which tricked uh, Eve. See, so like I said, on the higher levels, the Bible is all about human consciousness. Where did they learn that from? They learned that from the Egyptians because the Egyptian temples were based on the human body and human consciousness. A church is a human body. That's why you have a, a temple and you have a temple in your head. You know, it has, you have the church door opening and you have an obelisk on top. You know, and it's the same with the Kabbalah. Everything is about the macrocosm, which is outer space, and the microcosm, which is earth. And everything that's based on earth is based off of sex. That's why if you look at the word sex, you have what? You have the serpent, and then you have Yeah, I'm 
coming to 10. I apologize, but we only have like about maybe 10 minutes on the air. So what I want to make sure you get your final statements in before the time runs out. So once again, I appreciate the information that, you know, both special guests have presented. And it's up to you to do the research, people. you got to do the research. Like I always say, whatever you hear in the Bay Toffee Radio, you got to go back and do your own research. And make sure you research both sides, not just one, and then hopefully you'll get to the truth. But uh, before we go to the final statement, I just want to let you guys know that our brother Josh from Absolute Bible Truth has a new video coming out. Uh, you have to go to his website, which is www.absolutebibletruth.com forward slash store. That's www.absolutebibletruth.com forward slash store. It's going to come out next week, I believe next week Friday. And uh, the video is actually entitled, Is There a Secret Gay Agenda Amongst the House of Consciousness? All right, once again, uh, the video is entitled, Is There a Secret Gay Agenda Amongst the House of Consciousness? I'm hearing it's a four-hour video footage of the House of Consciousness. You know, with Sonetta, Polite, uh, you have um, uh, Shaka Atmos, uh, you know, all of these brothers out there, you know, from the House of Consciousness, you know, uh, you know, they basically addressing some of the things, our Mirage Squad, things of that nature. So our brother Josh said uh, he guarantees it's going to be definitely a powerful video. And on the actual boxing of the, um, the, the box of the video says, dedicated to all Hebrew Israelites. And uh, it's time for you to know the truth about ancient Egypt. Yeah, so that's what I, that's the actual box of the the video that I'm seeing on online. So uh, it's going to be available. I heard next week Friday. As a matter of fact, he's going to be doing an interview on Global Media Inc. on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to see the video, he's going to be talking about the video itself. Just go to YouTube and go to Global Media Inc. That's Brother by Sim. So you can check out the live interview on YouTube. So make sure you go check that out. So let's jump into this final statement before the time runs out. Let's go to Brother Amen. Go ahead. Final statements. Yeah, my final th- statement is, yeah, uh, I would like to thank Brother Sal for having me on the show and allowing me to speak and get this uh Epitomology and esoteric wisdom out. I want to um, also send a shout out to uh, Brother Mercy for, you know, hanging in there, even though he didn't give us no knowledge. And I would like to uh, thank all the audience, people that came in and tuned in, and hopefully everyone learned something today. So, you know, when I do these debates, it's, uh, it's designed to teach people things. It, I, don't, it, I don't get on here and, and uh, do, you know, personal attacks. If you notice during the whole lecture, I never said that, uh, well, Mercy, in order for you to be a Jew, you need to travel to Israel and get your passport. That's not relevant. See what I'm saying? So I'm here to teach people things that they might not know. If you don't believe it, you can buy books. It's it's on the, you know, some of that stuff's on the internet. But what people don't understand is that really ancient religions actually come from nature itself. You know, that's why the Egyptian gods were called the what? They were called the Neteru because they all represented aspects of nature. You know, you'd have Taoret, a hippo god, and it would have the Uraeus sun disc over his head, or you'd have a crocodile god, or you have a baboon god named Babby. It was it was nature adoration. When the European came in, he he called it worship, but we never worshipped those uh, animals. We understood that these animals were creatures that were created by Amun Ray. See, so the creator in the Bible is not some white man in the sky. The creator in the Bible is Amun Ray. It's Ray. It's the sun. That's why if you look at the word creator, Ray is hidden right there in the middle of the word creator. That's what's fascinating about esoteric knowledge and epistemology because it leads you to the truth of things. See, so that's why Amun is called what? The hidden one. And his name is Amun Ray. And that's why he's hidden in the word creator because the word creator literally means uh, the Cretan Taurus bull of Ray. So Crete is hidden in the word creator. Taurus is hidden in the word creator. And Ray is hidden in, tor- in the word uh uh, create creator or whatever. So all you got to do is understand the what I call like the basic um, deities of Egypt, and then you can apply those to other areas and other sciences, and then you'll gain that esoteric knowledge and epistemological knowledge, and you will become an esoteric master. And so when you get someone on the phone like Mercy, you'll quickly realize that this guy is a novice. He doesn't have any esoteric knowledge at all. We didn't learn anything from mercy at all. What did we learn from mercy? I don't think we learned anything from mercy, to be honest with you. I didn't learn nothing from that cat. He All he did was do a few Bible uh, quotes and, um, you know, attack me and say I need to go to Egypt. That's it. You know, so he he's not really no scholar. He doesn't study Hebrew. 
he don't even know the first letter of the Hebrew, and he didn't really understand what I was saying half the time. So he's saying that I'm not a worthy opponent uh, for him to debate, but he don't really need to be debating anybody, really, until he learns, um, you know, Hebrew and more about Egypt, uh, more about Africa. I mean, he, he, he really just needs to do a lot of studying in general. Because his brother said something like, well, the, the white man wouldn't allow us to read the Bible. That's, everyone knows that's not true because there were slave, sh- slave shacks in North America where the white man would give you the Bible. And then remember, he would oversee the, uh, the church meetings. You'd always have all these black people packed in these little shacks. And the black man's reading the Bible, and there's always a white man sitting in, in the back monitoring it. Everybody knows that because he wanted you to read that book. Because anytime the slaves would think about revolting, you know, a group of brothers like me would get together, a few rebellious slaves, and we'd be like, man, we get sick of this stuff. And then the, then the, the white, you know, what, then a snitch, maybe like Mercy or something like that, will go and tell the white man and be like, hey, they're plotting to escape or something like that. Then the white man will come back in with the Bible, and he'll say, well, look at Ephesians and Colossians. It says, slaves obey your masters, and you're enslaved because God put me in power there. You know, and then a few of the weak-minded brothers, you know, they'll believe that and be like, all right, well, it's in the Bible. I guess it must be true, so maybe I ought to get back to work. But see, everybody's not fooled by that. So he, don't, he doesn't understand. It don't matter whether it's the Torah or the New Testament. He doesn't even understand why there's an Old and New Testament, because it's based off the ancient Egyptian system. See, because you have an Old Testament because it represents what's called the old time of the year. And then you have a New Testament, which represents the new time of the year. And so remember we talked about Amun? The Egyptian god Amun is hidden in the word testament. It literally means the test of Amun. And you had an old test of Amun for the Israelites, and you have a new test of Amun or a new test of Amun for the Gentiles. That's why it's called the Old and New Testament. So there's so much esoteric wisdom that's hidden in these books. It's um, you could go on forever. And Mercy doesn't even know 1% of it. He don't even know that a surface exists because he ain't got no knowledge. The word knowledge means to know the ledge of the edge of the sacred owl. That's why the word owl is hidden in the word knowledge. And that's why the owl is the symbol of Bohemian Grove, which is the same owl that's on your $1 bill. Um, it's because it's the animal that can turn its head in a 360 degrees and it can see in the, in the, in the dark time. It represents wisdom which mercy don't have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Only thing he can do is just look at the Bible and just read verses. And that's why I was trying to say, like, anybody could do that. I could thumb through the Bible and be like,